the besties. Welcome or welcome back. Today I have 55 rustic DIYs for you. I sure hope you get inspired. For this DIY, I'm using the inside of a Dollar Tree canvas, just the frame, some skewers from Dollar Tree, and some tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to take my sanding sponge and I'm going to just make sure that all of the edges are nice and splinter free. And I'm going to clean up any of the dust left behind with my ladybug vacuum. And all of my tools are down in my Amazon store, so feel free to check it out in case you need some. I'm going to use my Kills White Primer and I'm going to paint this entire frame, back, front, inside, all everywhere. Just the whole entire thing. I'm going to use my heat tool so I can dry this quickly and move on to the next step. I'm creating a little mini window and so for the pane dividers I'm going to use these little skewers. At first I'm just going to tape them down and paint them in that same white paint front and back. Then I'm going to take my tumbling power blocks and I'm going to paint those as well. Just the parts that you're going to see. And now I'm going to figure out where I'm going to be placing them all. I'm going to create a little window box for florals. It's going to be so cute when this is done. I'm just positioning everything and then I'm going to start hot gluing it to the actual frame and creating my little box. Once all of the pieces are in place, I'm going to go back in with the hot glue on the underside and just kind of reinforce every seam so that it's nice and secure. Now I'm doing the next level, which is going to be the very front, and I'm going to put them vertically and then again reinforcing wherever I can. I don't think I need anything stronger than hot glue because I'm just putting light florals in here, but if you were putting something heavier, I would suggest a more permanent stable glue. Next I'm going to take my four skewers and I'm going to figure out exactly how long they need to be to put two vertical and two horizontal to make my little panes for the window. And I'm just going to use my little snips to go ahead and cut them to size and then I'm going to hot glue them down and do the first the vertical ones and then I'm going to do the horizontal ones. And this is so easy. They're definitely secure. I put hot glue under and over each of the ends of the skewers so there's no question that this is staying in place. Next, I'm going to very lightly dry brush some antique wax by Waverly over all of the white surfaces. And basically, I'm going to put a little bit on my brush, wipe most of it off, and then just kind of drag it around the edges and just wherever I want to see a little bit of distressing. Like I said, this is going to be a very, very light dry brush. I just want a little bit of an effect of it not being like stark white. I always save styrofoam whenever I get something in a package, so I'm just going to cut a little teeny rectangular piece of this very messy styrofoam and I'm going to hot glue it into that little window box that I created. And then I'm going to take some really cute Dollar Tree florals and I'm just going to snip them all to make them the right size and I'm going to start putting them inside of this styrofoam and it just looks so cute already. Oh my gosh, I love these colors, I love this pick and um, this is just turning out so, so cute. I'm going to add some of these cute little off-white flowers. I think it's just the right touch with the purple and the yellow and the green. And like I said, I'm just really loving this. And then I'm going to take some jute cord from the Dollar Tree and I'm literally going to hot glue it to the back and wrap it around, kind of crisscross. And then I'm going to push it around and kind of shape it the way I want it. This is just to add that little farmhouse touch to it. And I absolutely love how this looks. I had a Goodwill find that had this little burlap flower on it and I took it off. I figured I'd save it. And guess what? It's perfect for this DIY. It's going to hot glue it right to the center and literally that really makes this one so cute. Now I'm going to take a little bit of craft paper to cover up that back area because I don't want you to see any of my styrofoam or any of the mess. I'm just going to hot glue it and trim the edges and then I'm going to make a little hanger out of jute cord and this one's done. And you guys, I love it. I think it's so cute. You can hang it and be like sitting on a shelf whatever you want just like bringing a little bit of outdoors indoors and it's just so cute and farmhouse i hope you guys like it let me know
DIY is super rustic and very inexpensive and easy to do. I have some sticks that my husband gathered for me from our yard and I'm just figuring out the right ones that I want to make a ladder out of. So I needed two really thicker long ones and then four that would go across that weren't quite as thick. So I'm figuring that out right now out of all the sticks that I do have. And then I'm going to use my tin snips and I'm going to cut off all the rough edges, which I will have a link for that in my Amazon store down below. And they work really well for that, by the way. And I'm going to use my little ladybug vacuum to clean up all the little debris. And there's a link for that too in my store. And now I'm just kind of placing everything to see if I need to trim some more, which I got out my little handy dandy saw from the Dollar Tree. And um, I struggle with that thing, but it did. I did get the job done. And so now I am going to cut some rope and this rope is like a double ply, if you will. So I'm going to separate it and I'm going to use the single ply part of it because there's no reason to waste all of that rope. And I'm going to hot glue all the pieces in place so that they don't move around while I'm trying to tie the rope around. And I'm literally just going to put the rope underneath, tie a single knot, hot glue it down, and then wrap it around each side and hot glue that down. And then trim the edges. And I'm going to do that for all eight intersections. So I cut eight pieces of that rope. And then I also cut four pieces of the rope to go on the very ends of the longer pieces, which you will see shortly. And I'm gonna wrap those around and hot glue them as well. And I decided that I wanted to use my antique wax on the twigs because I wanted it to look a little darker and I really liked the way that looked. So I applied it to every single part and then I took a paper towel and I rubbed off all of the excess so it wasn't like super, super dark. And here I am now going back in and doing the ends of the long pieces of the ladder just so it has a little bit of a more finished look. I really love the size of this ladder. I can place it in so many different parts of my home and style it all different ways. And I don't have anything like this, so I'm really excited and I hope you guys like it. about this DIY. I'm using an old book and it's a diet book. What I'm going to do is show you how to fold this to make a book page vase. I'm going to do it three times. So you're going to fold the bottom corner up and then you're going to take that whole piece and fold it to the spine. And then that little triangle at the top you're going to fold over and then tuck it underneath. And you're going to do that every other page and then try to push it way down because it's going to really need to be pushed down as you go. The next one, you're going to take the top and fold that corner down to the spine. Then you're going to take that bottom right corner and just fold it up to the line of the other fold and then take the little triangle point and fold it to the end of the paper of the bottom fold. Literally, you're going to do this every other page for the entire book. My book was about 300 pages. So, you know, depending on how big you want this to be, that's how it would go. And I'm not going to show you every page I'm folding, obviously, but I'm going to show you various stages as I go. You can see it's starting to look like a vase. And I wanted to show you that if you didn't want to do a full vase, you could put like on a piece of cardboard or on a frame, you could just do like a half one. And that would be kind of a cool wall hanging. Anyway, I'm also going to link the person who I learned how to do this from. Um, it was from a YouTube video from a lady who mostly does crocheting, but I really loved her technique. So I will make sure to put a link for that in my description box. And I'm showing you the spine there because you really want to fold that in and get it as tight as possible. I'm using this amazing netted ribbon from burlapfabric.com and I will have a link down in my description box for this. And I'm just rolling it, literally, just rolling it and then kind of looping it as I roll so it's not a tight roll. And then I'm going to cut it off at the end and just turn it into a flower and it kind of has like a rose-like look. And literally, I made this up. You could just do it any way you want. I just had this idea that it would work. The ribbon does have wire in it and that's why it's possible to kind of shape it. So once I get that completely shaped and kind of fluffed the way I want, I'm going to take a little piece of jute twine and I'm going to just tie it around the bottom to secure it so that it doesn't fall apart.
Next, I'm gonna take some burlap that I got at Walmart. I'm just gonna cut off a little strip and I'm gonna pull off all of the strings going the long way up to right close to that seam on the other end. And then I am literally, I'm making this one up too, by the way. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll it and um, just kind of, you know, roll it back and forth, maybe a little, you know, twist it a little bit and literally just kind of make a wildflower looking thing. I'm just trying to make a bunch of really rustic kind of flowers out of the rope and the burlap and that kind of stuff just to make it you know really kind of cool and, and maybe a little bit vintage-ish looking vintage-ish is that a word I don't know I think I made it up oh well <laughs> so I'm just trimming the top giving it a little haircut and then I'm going to take some more of the jute twine and I'm gonna wrap it around four fingers like you're gonna make either a tassel or a pom-pom and I think I wrapped it around like 15 times And then I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to tie a another piece right across the middle. And I am actually going to do this twice. And then what I'm going to do is lay them across each other and make a flower that way. Now I'm gonna take this really pretty, very thin kind of you know, ombre tone yarn I got at Walmart, and I'm gonna wrap it around each petal back and forth across the middle and just kind of give it a little color because I thought that would be fun too. Once I've secured that, I'm gonna cut off the excess thread and I'm gonna fluff my flower, you know, all the little loops all the way around. I took some flower pieces that I had around and just pulled off really small pieces and hot glued them to the center of some of the flowers that I made using the twine and the burlap. I just thought that would be really fun. And now I'm making another flower and I actually got this idea from Leonep at DIY Beauty on Purpose. She did this in one of her videos and I'll link her down below as well, where she pulled out the long threads between the two edges so you don't take it all the way to the edge but you see how the edges have seams and then I'm going to take the bottom and hot glue it up to the other edge all the way across the piece and then I'm going to roll it and hot glue it and it makes such a pretty flower and I did want to give her credit for that. Now I'm going to fluff it and then I'm going to add a little piece of a yellow flower right into the center and I just love the look that this gives with these flowers to add the color. And I'm just going to add a few more little flowers to the center of this one. And now I'm going to make another one but this time I'm just going to wrap it around three fingers. I think I did 15 times again. And I'm going to tie the middle like I did before. I made two of these and after I'm done I'm going to actually cut the loops open this time to make a little bit of a different looking kind of a flower. I'm going to lay them across each other like I did with that other flower and then I'm just going to fluff it out after I hot glue it and there's that flower and I'll add something to the center also to give it a little bit of color. I've got this cute little pick of off-white flowers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to add those to the center so it's going to be attached to the inner spine and then I've got this leftover pick of lavender that I took the lavender pieces off of and on the ends I'm going to add all of the different flowers that I made out of the burlap and the twine and that way it'll look like it's coming off of a stem with leaves and I just love the way that looks and I'm going to hot glue it into the spine so it stays put and then I'm going to add those other flowers that I showed you first and I'm going to hot glue those 
those as well. And that way they won't go anywhere. Now, if you wanted to change this out seasonally, I wouldn't hot glue then. I would just stick them in there and maybe put some tape or something. And now I added two different kinds of very sheer ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I just thought that would be very pretty and, and light. And then I'm gonna take this really cute lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree and just wrap it around the center of my little bow. And I just did a very basic, you know, shoestring bow. And I'm gonna cut the ends of my bow with dovetails and that is it. I absolutely love how this turned out and I'm actually giving it to my mom for Mother's Day because she is quite the avid book reader. I hope you guys like it. For this Dollar Tree calendar hack, I'm going to use this 2022 farmhouse calendar and that is actually the picture I'm going to use. It was one of the months. And then I've got this piece that I got from the Goodwill. I got it for $3.99 plus it was a pink tag day so I got some 10% off. I'm going to clean it with my crud cutter and then I'm going to cover the whole top with the plaster color paint by Waverly. I love that color. It's perfect for something rustic. It's not stark white. So then I'm going to take antique wax and this old makeup brush that I got at the Dollar Tree a long time ago that's seen better days, but it's perfect for dry brushing where you put a little bit on your brush, wipe most of it off, and then kind of drag it across, and it gives it that old aged, you know, weathered look, which is what I'm going for here. I'm just gonna go ahead and go around the edges and make sure that those are a little bit distressed as well, and it kind of bleeds over to the front. And then I'm gonna take my square ruler and I'm gonna measure one in every one and a half inches. I'm gonna put a little spot. I'm gonna do it on each of the ends and in the middle because my square isn't as long as this piece and I wanna be able to draw straight lines. And I'm gonna use the pencil and basically draw shiplap lines. And then I'm gonna just take my finger and smudge the pencil. And if it gets too dark, you can go back in with a little you know, paper towel, just kind of damp and wipe off the excess, which I do. And then because I didn't want it to be quite that dark, I'm gonna go back over with that plaster, just lightly dry brushing it over the top to mute out a little bit of those lines. I'm gonna fussy cut out the word farmhouse. See, it took a while, but it was well worth it. And I'm also gonna cut out the wreath. I am gonna go back and cut out the center of the wreath as well. I'm gonna use my Mod Podge. I'm just gonna start laying down the Mod Podge and then placing my letters over it. A Couple of them broke apart, so I have to put them on individually, but this is something you can do if you don't have a cutting machine and you don't like the font on stickers, but you love the font on the calendar page. So I just thought this was so cute, I loved it. And then I'm just gonna put Mod Podge all over the top and that is that for the word. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the wreath, but I'm gonna turn this into a 3D wreath. I'm gonna use some actual greenery and embellish it. But now I'm gonna go all over the whole rest of the sign with the Mod Podge because I want it all to have a nice seal on it. Now I'm gonna take these little boxwood pieces. And then I've also got some other little picks. I think they, one of them is eucalyptus, I think. I always say the wrong one. Anyway, you guys know what they are, right? <laughs> and then I start hot gluing them on. I clip the pieces off the pick, and then I have all these little extra pieces that I'm gonna fill in with. And that way you get a couple colors, and look how cute it is. I love this one. I think it turned out so cute. You have to tell me what you think. I love adding something to a flat sign and making it kind of three-dimensional. It just gives it just a little more interest and it looks like a real wreath is on there. And yeah, of course I could have done that, but I like the way I'm using this welcome spring sign from the Dollar Tree and this really cool twine I got from burlapfabric.com. Again, the information is going to be down in my description box. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my Kills White Primer. I love this stuff. And I'm going to paint the entire back with one coat of it. I'm not going to go crazy and cover it real heavily. I don't mind if a little bit shows through. Because what I'm going to do next is use my Antique Wax, a combination of that by Waverly and Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paints and make a faux wood grain look. The key to this is making sure your strokes all go in the direction that you want the wood grain to go in. 
So in my case, I'm going up and down and I'm starting off with lighter you know, amounts and then I'm adding more little by little until I get the look I want. You really can't do this wrong. You're just going for what you like. And I'm going to use an Arteza paint marker. It's in brown and I'm going to go all around the edges because it was kind of this light looking color and I wanted it to blend and look like the whole thing was a piece of wood. Now I'm going to take my square ruler and I'm going to create kind of like shiplap lines and then I'm going to dig them out a little bit with a like putty knife I think is what I'm using or a blade just to kind of give that look. Now I'm going to actually be using that twine to outline a shape that I'm going to draw on there next. I'm going to take this little shape from the Dollar Tree that's a mason jar. Now this is smaller than I want it to be so I'm just going to kind of use it to get the overall idea of a mason jar. I want mine to actually be bigger and wider than this one because of the piece that I'm using to put it on. It would look too small if I use that little teeny size to draw. Now I'm going to take that awesome twine from burlapfabrics.com. I love it. It's like such a good quality and it's lighter so it really stands out against this wood grain look. Anyway, I'm going to hot glue it right around the outline of that mason jar that I drew and it's going to look so cool. I saw a picture of somebody who did something similar and I kind of made it my own but I just love the idea of it. So that's what I'm doing right now and I'm just going to go ahead and let you watch how I built my mason jar out of twine. Now at this point, as I'm building like the little, um, I don't know what they are called, but like the ridges around the top, I want it to look like my flowers are inside the mason jar. And since this isn't really like fully three dimensional, it's kind of hard. So what I did was I put them under the twine and that way when I lay the twine over it, it looks like they're inside. I mean, I just think that came out really cool. I love the flowers. I decided not to add the colorful ones. I thought it'd be nice to keep this kind of neutral because that way I could put it up whenever I want and wherever I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those little rivety things around the top of the jar. I decided to add a little dot of hot glue at the base of each of those stems just to make sure they stayed in place. And I like my projects to look finished so I took some craft paper and I just hot glued it to the back so that way you wouldn't see the other design on it and it just looks a little bit more you know professional and polished. Not that I'm selling it but in case I ever wanted to or even if I give it away I just want to make sure that it looks nice on both sides. I'm going to take a little bit more of that really really nice twine that I used already. I'm going to put a little tape around the end and then I'm going to poke holes back through that craft paper since there were already holes in the sign and I'm going to feed it from the back to the front and make a knot and then I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue there to hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I love the knot in the front. I just think it's so cute and it adds such a farmhouse feel to it and it makes the sign hang nicer because the string is more on the back. At least it's my preference anyway. <laughs> And of course I couldn't just leave well enough alone so I had to add some more of those little white flowers. I just felt like right in the front there that it was really dark towards the top of the mason jar. So just added a few more flowers, hot glued them down and I think that just kind of balanced it out. You'll have to let me know what you think. I really like this one. I'm super happy about it. Can't wait to hear what you guys think in the comments.
Dollar Tree sticker hack. I've got this cute little box I found at the thrift store for $3. Looks like it originally came from TJ Maxx. And then I've got these cool little faux kind of metal stickers from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna turn this box into something that looks really vintage. I'm gonna clean it with my crud cutter, take off the little hinges, and then I'm going to sand down the whole box and get rid of that little design on the top. And since it's just painted off, not too bad. There it is, ready to go. And I've wiped away all the dust. Next, I'm gonna take my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just gonna put a you know decent coat on the whole thing and then wipe away all the excess just to freshen it up and give it a little more dimension so it doesn't look quite as worn, but still old. And there it is. I'm gonna put back the hinges and then we're gonna go ahead and start using the stickers to embellish this. So I want this to be like a little treasure box where you keep important things. I'm making this for my husband. He loves stuff like this and it's rustic, so he loves that. So I've got this really pretty cherished sticker and then I'm gonna put little embellishments. I don't know what you call those on the in the ends. And I put all different ones. It just looks so cute. And then I figured the stickers weren't strong enough. So I put some Aliens Tacky Glue on the back of every single one just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Cause you know, Sometimes the sticky stuff kind of comes off. And I added some more things to the corners of the two smaller sides. I'm also gonna put some stickers on the back. They're all a little different, but they all look kind of vintage. On the top, I'm gonna put this really cool little design, kind of like a mandala, but it comes in three parts. So it's got a center, a middle, and then an outside one. And I just thought that looked really nice on the top. I found some other little embellishments to put in the four corners on the top. I'm going to take my Folk Art Brush Metal Gold and my Apple Barrel Burnt Ember and I'm going to make sure all the pieces are like the same color so it looks like they all go together and that really makes such a difference because it really does look cohesive now and I'm loving it. This was so easy to do and it was really fun. I'm gonna finish it off with some finishing wax that I got on Amazon. It'll be in my Amazon store and that just kind of seals the wood and I love it. Let me know what you think. And now there's something in the air and a sparkly shimmer on our skin. little book stack that says faith hope love and you know for $24 I could make this for almost nothing I'm gonna use my kills white primer paint and I'm gonna use some nautical actually I think it's just the bigger jute from Walmart and then I've got three books that were already used and so I'm just taking off the covers and the back covers and leaving the rest of the book and then what I'm going to do is take the white primer paint and then very lightly paint over the tops of each of the books and the bottom of the bottom, well, excuse me, the top of the top book, the bottom of the bottom one, and all the way around the sides of all of them. Because the book in the middle, you're only gonna see the edges. You're not gonna see the top and bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. Go ahead and cover those with the paint. But I want you to see the writing coming through just a little bit. So I'm not like doing a heavy coat at all, just a very light single coat. Then I'm gonna use my premium decoupage and I'm gonna do all the spines. And then I'm gonna do the top of the top book and the bottom of the bottom book because I, just in case it were to get wet or something, you know, it's paper. So I wanna make sure that it's protected. Next, I'm gonna use a piece of tape to get a straight line. And with one of my markers, I'm gonna write the words. And I'm gonna make them look a little bit like newspaper type font. I was gonna use stamps, but my stamps are too little and it's hardly noticeable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and freehand it. And you know, I'm not a calligrapher, but I'll do the best I can. And then there's a little heart on the one that says love. Now in the original, they're not this dark. So I'm trying to dab at them a little bit. Then I'm gonna take the rope and I'm gonna wrap it around three times each direction and then hot glue it to the bottom. And then the last thing I'm gonna do just to make sure that the letters aren't 
too dark because so I'm gonna get a little bit of the white paint on my fingers and I'm just gonna kind of smudge it over the letters you know just a little bit just to lighten it up and make it look a little bit older and kind of more used that's it you guys this was super easy and I love it about five or six corks and then I've got this foam wreath ring from the Dollar Tree a wired jute and some rope from Walmart and then that burlap I got at a thrift store for four dollars for that whole thing I cut out strips of the burlap and then I'm going to start gluing it and wrap it around the wreath form and that way you won't see the green it'll overlap and I'm going to do that for the whole thing and just hot glue each piece and start a new one Now I'm gonna trim off those little flyaway pieces from the burlap. There it is, and I love the way it looks now, I have a nice base. And I'm gonna use the wired rope. I'm gonna create a tree of life looking wreath. So I'm gonna use the wired jute to do the shape of the trunk and the branches. And then I'm gonna, there's a wire in it, I'm gonna stab it into the foam and hot glue it to secure it down. And I'm looking at a picture of a tree of life and I'm just positioning the leaves like it looks in the picture. You could do yours any way you want. And then I'm just gonna kind of wrap around in the middle there and attach it. And then I'll take the next piece up to the top, clip it, and then stick the wire in and hot glue. And I'll do that until I have as many branches as I want. You could do this, you know, however you want it to look. I'm, like I said, I'm just looking at a picture that I saw. And now I'm just gonna wrap it around the very trunk of the tree and start getting that a little bit thicker. And I'll just go all the way around and attach it at the end. There is the base of the tree right there. Now I'm gonna put a hang around the back before I go too much further. And I'm gonna take the corks and I'm just gonna use my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna start cutting little teeny slices. Now I can't give you an exact number because it depends on how many leaves you wanna put on your tree. Now I'm gonna take that rope from Walmart and I'm gonna start building and I'm just gonna wrap it around and then go up and down. And you'll see here in just a second, you could do this any way you want to. It just kind of whatever looks good to you. So I just made a little bit of it thicker and then I added some more and then added some more and there it is. That's the way I wanted it to look. Now I'm going to put hot glue on each of those slices. I'm going to start putting those little cork slices on the branches and then I'm going to put some underneath by the trunk as if the leaves fell. Now off camera, I did dry brush these with the burn color chalk paint from Waverly because I felt like maybe you wouldn't know they were leaves. I don't know. So I just put a little bit on there. I think this came out beautiful and I just love it. Let me know what you think. orange burlap from Dollar Tree and I've also got this orange yarn from Dollar Tree and then I have these really cool picks that I got off Amazon some paper towel roll inserts and I'm going to cut the paper towels like to a point at the end but I'm going to keep them you know round and I'm going to do two of the large ones and then I'm going to take the pieces I cut off and make two smaller pieces with those so I'm going to take the burlap and I'm gonna start gluing it around and kind of pulling it tight as it gets to the bottom to a point and I'm gonna make little carrots with these and they're just gonna look so cute and natural looking so with the littler ones though I'm going to use the yarn so I'll make three with the burlap three of these little ones with the yarn so I'll first glue the top together with some hot glue and then it leaves that little point and I'll just start wrapping the yarn now this takes a little bit longer because obviously it's yarn but I didn't put the glue everywhere I just wrapped around maybe every five ten times and then I added a drop of glue went all the way to the bottom and if I found when I got to the bottom if there were like any spaces that weren't covered I just randomly wrapped around and then got to those spots put a little hot glue and filled them in and that way it wasn't like perfectly wrapped it looked a little bit more uneven if you will and I wanted that Thank you. 
on the ones made out of burlap, I'm going to take some yarn and just kind of wrap it around with a lot of space between them. What I'm trying to do is tie the two carrots together. So I'll just go all the way around and down to the end, glue it and snip. I'll do that for all three of the larger carrots. And then when I get to the small carrots, I'm gonna pull off a little bit of that burlap and I'm gonna do the same thing with it that I did to the large carrots. And I'll do that to the small ones and just kind of wrap it around with spaces. And I did that to all three of the little ones. So now my carrots are done. I'm gonna take my greenery picks from Amazon. And I'm just gonna cut where I think I need to for the little ones. And then I'll be able to use most of a large one for the bigger carrots. I just need to cut the ends off a little bit with my snips. And you'll see I just stick it right in that opening at the top from the paper towel holder. And look at that, they look so cute. And then, I'll, like I said, I'll put the bigger pieces into the larger carrots. I love how this turned out. Talk about some rustic, adorable little carrots. So easy to make barely cost anything and they are the cutest. DIY. I've got my old container from some french fried onion that's uh, probably around Thanksgiving time. Got some craft sticks, the medium size. I'm going to use my miter shears and I'm going to first take the craft sticks and see how long I need them to be to go all the way around this container and then I will use the first one that I cut and draw lines on the rest of them and then use my miter shears to cut them all down. I'm going to hot glue in like three spots and I'm just going to start lining them and I'll use the curved side at the top and it's going to look like a little crate at the end that's my goal here and when i got to the very end on the side there i had to cut a little bit of smaller piece you know narrow down the uh, popsicle stick and that was fine and then i'm going to take two smaller ones of like the traditional popsicle stick size and i'm going to cut off the two ends with scissors i just want you to see that you could do that without fancy tools and then i'm going to paint the whole crate and the little four cross pieces with the stolen linen white chalk paint Now, once that's all done, I'm gonna take a little foam brush and I'm gonna dry brush some antique wax from Waverly. I'm just gonna put some on my brush, wipe most of it off, barely dab around the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna put very lightly go on each of the little spaces, like right where they touch. And then on the four crossbars. I just want this to look like a dirty old crate. I'm gonna hot glue those little side pieces on the front and the back. This is such an easy way to make a little crate. And also this way, I don't have to worry about it caving in on itself. I can just do it with hot glue and because that container's in there to hold it together. So I'm gonna take a little piece of a drop cloth. I cut it into like a rectangle and I've got a brown drop marker from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to write carrots, five cents on there. And it's hard to write on drop cloth. So you just take your time. I use the fine end of this to do the actual letters. And then I went back with the other end of the pen, which is broader. And that way I could fill it in a little bit more. And you don't have to have fancy writing for this. This actually looks better when you don't. So I wasn't trying to be perfect. And there you see, I filled them in a little. And then there's where I'm gonna do the five cents. The key here is not to press too hard. Now I'm gonna distress around the edges the same way that I did on that little crate, but just around the edges. And then I'm gonna fray a little bit of the edges too. And I'm just gonna use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and I'm gonna attach it right to my little crate. This is such a cute little rustic container and we'll be able to put little carrots in there. So that is gonna be fun. I'm gonna put a plastic bag inside so I don't have to fill the whole thing with my moss, but I will fill the top of it with the moss. And that's it. Talk about an easy, cute DIY. tumbling tower block hack I'm going to use five tumbling tower blocks and seven of the bigger popsicle sticks and some black chalk paint and the white rust-oleum linen white chalk paint and my miter shears I'm going to cut off the 
two ends of the popsicle stick and then I'm gonna eventually adjust it to uh, the right length that I need. Right here I wasn't sure but I did sand both of the edges and then one of the edges I rounded and that's kind of like the bottom of this is gonna be like a piano. And then I'm gonna take some scraps that I had and I'm gonna put them on the back and just secure all these pieces together by putting two rows of those cut up popsicle sticks. I'm gonna paint the whole thing with the white and then I'm gonna take a piece of tape and put my five tumbling tower blocks on it and use the chalkboard black paint for that. And I'm gonna do everything but the bottom. And once I've got that, I'm going to distress the keyboard. This is gonna look super old fashioned. I'm gonna use my mister with some water in it and dry brush my antique wax by Waverly and just kind of wipe it off with a baby wipe. And then I'm gonna add the little black keys or tumbling tower blocks and I'm gonna make what looks like part of a piano. I love this so much. I just think it's it's so cool looking and I got inspired by something I saw on Pinterest. I'm gonna put some craft paper on the back and take off what I don't need and then I put together some rub-on transfers and some other stickers so that I could give the words I want. I didn't have all the letters I needed. So I cut up some of those little stickers and I like made them into letters. Like you can see the W, K, T and the two I's that's gonna end up being the word with. Yeah, you gotta get creative when you run out of stickers. And it is going to say, it is well with my soul. And I didn't have two L's, so I took those two welcome stickers and I just cut off an L off the second one and made it work. So you literally just rub on the back of the transfer with something a little pointy or sharp until you see the paper come away and then you kind of lift it up. And if it doesn't come off, you keep rubbing. I'm gonna use tacky glue, Aileen's tacky glue, to put on the word well, because that's just regular paper. That part wasn't sticky. It had a little foam sticker on the back that I peeled off. And now it doesn't, you can't even tell it wasn't one piece. And I took my brayer and kind of rubbed over it to make sure it was laying very flat. And then I had another kind of a letter uh, rub on transfer and I was able to do the word soul with that. I love this so much. I'm gonna put some Mod Podge over the top of the whole thing. And then I'm gonna take some rope that I got at Walmart. I'm gonna start at the bottom about halfway across and I'm gonna hot glue it all the way around. I'm gonna make room for a hanger by pulling it up higher than the top and then come all the way around the other side and meet up where the other piece ended. And I think this one is gorgeous. Let me know what you think. Walk with me, lead the way I will follow. You woke me up, I don't I'm going to use about 15 book pages. I've got some burlap, I've got a little bamboo wreath from the Dollar Tree, and also some burlap that I already had on hand. I'm going to pull the pages out of the book, and then I'm going to trim off where the edges are uneven. I'm going to take each one of these, and I'm going to fold them in half, and then I'm going to take the top right corner, fold it over, and the left side, fold it all the way across. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm not going to cut up on the top part there. I'd turn this around. I'm going to cut like a petal shape, make sure it stays within that one part and then open it up and look at that, you end up with a flower. So here I am again, it's folded. I'm just gonna cut a petal shape, open that up, and there you go, there's a flower. If you need to go back and replay that, go right ahead. Now I'm gonna cut off three petals. I'm gonna cut off another one that has two petals and one. So you need exactly what it's on the screen here. Go ahead and take a screenshot or stop it and write that down. I'm gonna take the top of each petal, I'm gonna roll it over with my pencil. I'm also going to cut a little bit between the petals just so they're not so, you know, tight. And I'm going to take this one single petal, roll it up. Then I'm going to take the two petals, roll it up. I don't hot glue it. You can use any glue you want. And then I'll do the same thing with the three petal. And then I'll put them all inside each other. You know, like those little Russian dolls that nest inside of each other? That's basically what's going to happen. I'm just going to roll up everything and leave the two full flowers out and you know until I get done with the other ones. So I will glue them into each other. So right at the end, you might snip a little piece off the end so it's flat. Go ahead and put the glue on it, put them inside of each other like I'm doing right here. And then when you get to the last two full flowers, take the smaller of the two if one is smaller. And you're just going to glue right into the center that piece that has all those other pieces. And then you're only going to glue the very bottom of each petal so they can still fold outward. See what I'm doing? I'm just putting it way inside and pushing down and folding the petal outward. I'm going to do the same exact thing with this one. Now, once I have that done, I'm going to need five of these all together for this bamboo wreath. It's a smaller wreath. It's not like a 14 inch. It's probably like a six inch wreath, I'm guessing. And there's what the flower looks like. Isn't that beautiful? Then I'm going to take the burlap. I'm going to do the same kind of folding and glue the flower right into the burlap and then 
I will also put a little glue on each petal of the burlap, just like I did with the last flower. I'm gonna glue the very back of the flower and right to the bamboo wreath, and I'm only gonna put them on half of the wreath. These little bamboo wreaths are odd shaped, so pick the way it'll look the best with your flowers and give it more of a round look. I took a little piece of twine, just tucked it through the twine that was already on the wreath, made a knot, and pulled it up, and that's my hanger. That little garland I had from the Target Dollar Spot, I'm just going to cut off each leaf that I need and put them all around the outside or back of the flower so that you see just a glimpse of it. I'm going to do that for the whole side where the flowers are. And look at that. It's so pretty. Such an easy wreath. I love this one. Let me know what you think. An open heart when your world is a mess. That's the only kind of love. The only kind of love. No need for presents. This tumbling tower block hack, I need 36 blocks. And I'm going to make them in little sets of three going in alternating directions and two rows of them. And then I've got this metal thankful sign from the Dollar Tree and this really big nautical rope. I'm just going to use the wood glue finally. I should have done that all along, but I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to glue each set of three pieces together. Now, once I have all of my little three pieces together, there's going to be 12 then. I'm going to glue together the pieces one on top of each other. And then when I'm done with that, I'll glue the pieces across the middle. So I'm just going to make sure that really every part is glued together when it's all said and done. Explore every bend of the road. So there I've got my piece with all 36 of the little pieces. I'm going to take some wood glue and fill in any parts that didn't fill in really well and sand that off as best as I can. And then I'm going to paint the whole thing with the rust linen white paint. And I'm not going to do a perfect job because I'm going to take a baby wipe and wipe off a lot of the paint. I want that to be how I distress it. But then I decided that I should probably distress it a little more. Uh, but first I'm gonna lay down some Mod Podge over the whole thing, I just wanna seal it. And then I'm going to, with some hot glue, attach my thankful word over the top. It doesn't take too much, and the Mod Podge is still wet, so I kinda use that as a little extra adhesive as well. So now I'm gonna take the burnt umber and I'm just going to go all the way around the edges with a brush like dry brushing where you put just a little bit on your brush and then wipe most of it off and I'm going to do that over the top too and I just thought that made it look a little bit more even um, more consistently distressed and then I'm also going to take that color and I'm going to go around the edges now I didn't really have to because I'm going to be putting rope all around it to create a hanger, but I decided just in case any little part showed, I would just paint that and I kind of wiped off any excess off camera. I also forgot to film me hot gluing the rope all the way around and making a hanger and that's all there was to it and you'll have to let me know what you think. Walk with me, lead the way I will I'm starting off with a little kind of basket hanger that I got at the Goodwill for $2.99. And then I've got my sunflowers, of course, from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use two different paints, the cashew and the hazelnut. So I'm gonna start off with the cashew, just kind of dry brushing around the basket. And then I'll add a little bit of the cashew where I think it needs it, but it's optional. I'm just trying to lighten up this basket. I don't really like the dark color that it already is. And there it is, all finished. Now the basket was a little flimsy probably because it was at the Goodwill, who knows? And I'm gonna take two zip ties. I'm going to push them in from the inside and then pull them tight around the handle of this little basket to make sure it's very secure. And then I've got this burlap fabric that I got from a little thrift store. I got that whole bunch of it for four dollars. I'm gonna cut off a piece, fray the ends, and kind of fold it into a triangle and position it inside the basket. I'm gonna take my sunflowers and I'm gonna bend the stems and I'm just gonna figure out how I want to arrange them. Right now I'm putting it on both sides, if you will. I do end up putting them all to the right as you're looking at it, because I'm gonna add some a word on there that's made out of wood. But right now you see me kind of playing with it, trying to figure out how I want to arrange them. I have this thankful and blessed wooden sign from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna draw a little line where the letters touch so I know where I want to cut with my utility knife or X-Acto blade. And I'm just gonna go ahead and score it over and over until it comes apart and I'll take off the whole word blessed. I'll sand down the rough edges where I cut it. 
And then I'm gonna paint the whole thing with a base coat of plaster chalk paint from Waverly. And after I do that, I'm gonna take the maize color from Waverly and I'm gonna kinda, of, at first I was lightly dry brushing and then I went on a little heavier because I really want it to stand out when you look at it. I'm gonna take a furniture marker in the color Walnut from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go around all of the little edges just to make it pop a little more. I think it needed something darker. And then I'm gonna hot glue it right there at the top of the circle part of the basket um, and I'm gonna put that at diagonal and that's it. This one is done. I think it's so cute. You can arrange the flowers any way you want. I love it. This was so easy. Dollar Tree galvanized metal pack. I'm using this metal plaque. I've got a cute little sticker that says be still from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use one of these square planks from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some plaster color chalk paint by Waverly, burnt umber by Apple Barrel, and the chalkboard paint by Craftwise. I'm going to take my metal piece and I'm going to dab the plaster on it just very lightly. I'm trying to antique this, make it look more worn. I'm going to do the same thing with the black and I'm taking most of this paint off my brush before I even apply it. And then I'm going to take the burnt umber and go around the edges and a little bit on the piece itself. And now it looks much more aged and really cool. I'm going to sand down that little wood square and then I'm going to spray it with some water using my mister. And then I'm going to take the burnt umber paint and I'm basically going to stain it. So I'm going to get the paint all over it and then wipe it off. Now I'm purposely not doing full coverage because I'm going to try something new here. I'm going to try kind of a two-tone looking wood. I've got a furniture marker from the Dollar Tree in the color Walnut. And what I'm gonna do with that one, it's got a little bit of a reddish tone. I'm gonna go around the edges. And then on those areas that weren't covered very well on the front, I'm just gonna lightly put some on and it kind of gives a different look, like a little bit more of a natural wood look when it's not like one color. And I just thought I would try that and I like the way it turned out. So if you haven't tried that, it might be something fun to do. Then I'm going to sand down the top just a little bit just to kind of blend the two colors. I'm going to place the piece of wood right in the center there. But before I glue it down, I added a hanger just using some rope and putting them in the holes. And now I'm going to take my little Be Still sign. And because it's paper, I want to use a little bit of the burnt umber and just kind of distress it a little bit, make it look maybe like it is worn and a little bit older. I'm even going to put some across the top and wipe off any excess. And now it matches the rest of the sign. I'm going to take off the little foam piece on the back because I don't really want this to be 3D. And then I'm going to use my Aileen's Tacky Glue and I'm just going to put that all over the back of it and I'm just going to lay it down right in the center there. And then I'm going to take some E6000 and hot glue and I'm going to attach that wood plank right to the front of my metal piece. And I love the combination of wood and metal. I hope you guys like this one too. I think it's super sweet and rustic. These houses at Goodwill. They're originally from Target for five dollars and I got them for four and then I've got this Dollar Tree fabric from the Crafter Square and I am going to cut out the front of both of the houses with the fabric and I'm going to attach it and I'm just going to dress them up because we are creating a fall tiered tray and there are going to be so many amazing pieces for that that we're going to do today. And these two are just the beginning. I'm going to use my Beacon Fabric Tack Glue to glue the house right onto the fabric. I'm just going to pick the area that I want to use and then I'll trim around the edges with my scissors. Super easy. I'll do the same thing with both of them. Now that I've got the houses trimmed, I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and go in and cut out where the little windows are. I'm going to use some of that Beacon Fabri-Tac glue to put in there to kind of set down the edges. I'm just going to put a stick in there and help that along. Then I've got this piece of a basket that I took apart from the Goodwill, and I'm just going to cut it into little pieces to make a roof line for the bigger, the taller house. I'm going to use my miter shears from Amazon to cut that out super easy. And then I'm just gonna hot glue those right in place. I hope you'll follow me on social media. All my links are down below in the description box. 
This is a really easy way to dress up some wooden houses that you could either find at the Dollar Tree, the Target Dollar Spot, or anywhere by adding some fabric and a little roof line. And I'm gonna use my furniture marker and walnut to go ahead and make that roof line consistently the same color. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other house, but with a wider piece. I'm gonna take some of this Pitberry garland from Hobby Lobby and make a little teeny wreath. I'm gonna hot glue it to the front of the shorter house. And I just think that is super cute. And then I've got this like greenery from Ikea. I just cut off teeny pieces. I'm just gonna put them around that wreath to make it look like, you know, an actual wreath, not just pit berries. Then I'm gonna make a little chain using my Dollar Tree twine. And I'm gonna fold that into a circle, make sure it will fit nicely at the top of the taller house. And I'll make a knot and then I will hot glue that and that'll become my little wreath for that house. Remember making those little bracelet chains when you were younger? Oh my gosh, they were so cute and so fun. So I'm gonna attach that and then I'm gonna take one little piece of that same greenery and put it on there just to kind of add a little more interest. And I think these are adorable and I can't wait to put them on my tear tray. I'm gonna take some more of that straw hat, the brim that I had left over, and a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna use my Mod Podge lid to trace a circle and cut it out. And then I'm gonna take that piece of the brim of the hat. I'm gonna wrap it around to see how much I need to go around the whole thing. And then I will cut that. And then I'm gonna hot glue the very base of that to the edge of the cardboard circle. What I'm creating is a little basket. So once I get that, the right size and glue down I'm going to trim it and then the next thing I'm gonna do is take some jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna put little pieces starting from the top to the bottom and then I'll cut them off and I'll do that all the way around the entire little basket now that I have that done I'm gonna cut some more pieces of jute that will fit all the way around and I'm gonna start at one spot and then I'm gonna weave them in and out of those other little pieces that's why I didn't glue them all the way down only the top and the bottom and I'm gonna create a little bit of a basket weave look more than even the basket already has. I'm gonna take my Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paint. I'm gonna paint the bottom, and then I'm gonna do some dry brushing all the way around the outside and a little bit on the inside. I've got these beads from Amazon, and then I've got the lacquer paint from Waverly and this little green paint that I had. And I'm gonna do some of the beads in the red and some in the green. And then I've got this little these little sticks, and I'm gonna hot glue those in to create the stem. Now I'm gonna take my Dollar Tree fabric, and I cut out a square that would fit in the little basket, and then I kind of frayed the edges. Now I'm going to stick that inside. I'm going to add some uh, raffia in there and then I'm going to put my little apples in there. Isn't this the cutest little apple basket? Let me know what you think. Dollar Tree metal hack. I've got these cute little bottle caps from the Crafter Square. I've got three of them and I also bought these seeds at Dollar Tree. I was inspired by Chalk It Up Fancy. They did something with the seed packets and it made me want to try this. So I took the seeds out and cut off the back so I still have the instructions. And then I'm going to take the pieces that I cut off the top, I'm going to saturate the edges with water, make it really wet so that I can just rip around the edges, real close to the edge there. I want to give it more of an antique look and I didn't want those nice perfect edges to be there. So there's one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some spray adhesive, I believe I got this at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to spray the back, lay it down, wipe off the excess. And I'll also use my brayer, which is from Amazon. That helps really make sure the thing lays very flat. I love doing that. You can also put saran wrap over the top too when you do it. I'm gonna dry brush the burnt umber all over this bottle cap piece and especially on those edges where I ripped the paper. And that makes this look really, really antique and very, very rustic. Now I did the same thing to all three of them. Then I've got this really beautiful kind of like burlap ribbon. I got this from burlapfabric.com. I'll put a link down in the description box if you're interested. It's a really nice heavy duty piece. And I just cut it, leaving some edges on the top and bottom. And I'm going to hot glue each one of these bottle cap pieces to my burlap ribbon. And I'll leave a little gap between each of them. And then I'm gonna add some more glue on the back because I only did it really down the center and I wanna reinforce that so it stays in place. I made a little hanger out of some rope and I just hot glued it to the back and added some tape over the top to just seal it in there with more hot glue and that works really well. 
I've got a bunch of greens. This is some boxwood I got off Amazon. I'm gonna glue some to the top and just make a kind of a little arrangement there. And then I'm gonna use some yellow flowers from the Dollar Tree. Just gonna cut off the little stems and hot glue them right down. I was trying to get the colors of the flowers that are in this little seed packets. I didn't have the blue, but I used some purple. And then I also did little white ones in the middle there. And then I'm gonna add some more of that greenery on the bottom. You could do however you want, any greenery, no greenery, whatever suits your fancy. And then I decided to add one more little white flower because it looked so empty where the white little baby flowers were. And I just had a beautiful rose and I just decided to put it right in the center there. That really finished it off. This is such a beautiful rustic piece, especially if you like gardening and flowers. You have to let me know if this is something you might want to try. Dollar Tree doily hack I'm going to take two doilies and I'm going to take the sign from Dollar General and then I got this burlap at a thrift store when I was visiting Jackie from Bless Beyond Measure four dollars for that whole thing that's amazing I'm going to use some of those uh, well, fall florals as well I've got this amazing tool from Amazon and it is in my Amazon store that pulls staples out like look how easy this is happening you couldn't get these things out if you tried any other way I swear and then I took off what I thought was a canvas and then watch this it's paper. Okay, that is the cheapest sign ever. <laughs> anyway, I did go back and put some staples in the corners because I was afraid this would fall apart. I'm gonna take my cashew colored chalk paint by Waverly. I'm just gonna paint the whole entire frame just in case you can see it through the burlap. I cut a piece of that burlap and I'm gonna trim it down even further because what I'm gonna do is fold it over the sides and then staple it down and also use some hot glue. I'm gonna do all four of the corners first. I'm not sure if this is the best way, but it worked. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue and kind of tack down the sides. That's like, I'm almost wrapping it like a present would be. And then I'm gonna use some more hot glue and then I'm gonna start stapling the piece right onto the back there. And I do that with all four sides. Now that that's done, I'm gonna take my two doilies, I'm gonna keep them doubled up. And I want the scallop side to be up on top. So I just folded it in half and I'm gonna hot glue the two sides and then the very bottom, I'm also gonna hot glue that. And that creates a little pocket. And once I have it completely attached, I'm going to start playing with my florals, the aster flowers and the cattails from the Dollar Tree. I'm not liking that it's so white, white it, for a fall piece with the burlap. So first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make it look like a little envelope. So I folded down one of those pieces and I'm gonna use my Burnt Umber Paint by Apple Barrel and I'm just gonna outline the parts that make it look like an envelope. But then it was still too white, so I did a mixture of water and Burnt Umber and I just kind of distressed it. And then I cut off that other piece because it just didn't look right if it was gonna be an envelope. And there it is, and I just think it's super cute. Would you believe my husband wants this one? You know he loves those really rustic ones, but I think it's really cute and it's perfect for fall. I'm gonna use another one of those corrugated metal plaques from the Dollar Tree, and then this leather, faux leather, blessed word from the Dollar Tree, and then a bunch of corks that my daughter-in-law gave me. The Waverly Plaster Chalk Paint, the Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel, and the Chalkboard Paint, for, I got that at Dollar Tree. And what I'm gonna do is dry brush again, the plaster all over this to antique my piece of metal. And then I'm also gonna use the black and the burnt umber again and go around the edges with the burnt umber just to make it look a little rusty and old and just very rustic. I love this look so much and it's so easy to achieve. I took a hammer, I was trying to flatten out the edges and make this lay as flat as possible because to put these corks around the edges, the one side is like kind of curvy from the corrugated part, so you really have to flatten it. So I took my corks and my little utility knife and I am just making a line across one side and then you know putting the blade in and making it a little deeper and that way I can set them right on the edges and I did use some hot glue to apply them so they would stay in place. There it is with all the corks. Now it's not perfectly flat but I eventually get it to a really good place. I'm going to add a hanger just through the hole super easy with some rope and then I'm going to reinforce the corks with more hot glue on the back because I just want to make sure that it stays in place. 
I'm going to take the little faux leather blessed word and I'm going to put some hot glue on the bottom of it and then I'm going to apply that right to the middle and that is it. This one is so easy but so beautiful and I love using the corks you know whenever I can because I think they add such a bit of charm. Let me know what you think. I'm going to take this Dollar Tree house. I recently did a video showing you another hack with those houses. I'll link that down below. I'm going to use my heating tool from Amazon to take that tag off. It really helps a lot with the stickers. And I'm going to use some Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint and my Burnt Umber Apple Barrel Paint. I'm going to paint the inside and back of the house. I did not need to do the back after all because I decided to cover all the rest with the Burnt Umber. So now I'm just going to cut the book pages into little teeny you know pieces and then put some glue or Mod Podge, whatever you want to use, down inside and just start Mod Podging, like going all different directions, all different sizes, and just cover that inside face of the shadow box house. I love doing Mod Podging. It's so fun and there's so many different ways you can do it. And I think book pages look amazing when you Mod Podge them. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I love having you here and I hope to see you guys again soon. Okay, now I'm just covering that whole thing in the Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna touch up kind of where the corners, where it all meets, the book pages meet the sides. Make sure there wasn't any like white space left, and that just kind of adds to the character of it. I'm also gonna dry brush that burnt number very lightly on the face of this, like in, just so it looks like that. I've got these little garland pieces from Dollar Tree. Usually use these at Christmas time. If you just take one and wrap it around to fit the size of what you have and twist it, you will have a little mini wreath. And then I took my scissors, gave it a little haircut, which is such a mess, you guys. Oh my gosh, that stuff sticks to everything. Anyway, I'm gonna put a little piece of twine in it and I'm gonna hot glue that right to that top peak of the house and hang it. And oh my gosh, this is just such a cute, kind of rustic piece, I really like it. I've got these beads that I got on Amazon. They're in my Amazon store too. And they come in all different sizes. And I'm just gonna hot glue them and I'm gonna keep them in their raw state. And this turned out so cute. You could put this on a shelf, a riser, wherever you want. I love this one. Super easy project. I've got a little piece of wood that I got on Amazon, but Dollar Tree has them too. A little round, and then I took a piece from the back of the 2022 calendar that I had, and I am just gonna use this fabric again from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna trace that shape of the square on there, and then I will cut that out. Once that's cut, I'm gonna fray the edges a little bit. I just want this to look rustic because this whole tear tray is gonna be rustic. I'm gonna use my Beacon Fabric Tack glue. I'll put that right on the wood and then I will apply the little piece of fabric right on there. I'm being really careful so it doesn't stick before I want it to. That's why I'm kind of holding it up. And there we go. Just kind of push that down, make sure it's there. And then I'll trim any excess off around the edges. Then that little wood round I have, I'm gonna trace that circle onto my little calendar piece. Now I end up trimming it down even more, but I uh, needed something to work with. So I've cut it out. I'm gonna take the Burnt Umber Paint by Apple Barrel. I'm gonna paint right around the edges and then the, the sides as well. Then I'm gonna take my scissor blade and I learned this from my friend Linda at Faithstick777, the one I'm collabing with. You just kind of rub your scissor blade along the edges of any paper and it gives it a really cool distressed rustic look. Now I'm gonna put some glue right on the back of that and I'm gonna put it right on my little circle. And I did decide to put a little more of that um, burnt umber paint on it to distress it, but first I'm gonna use my little nail file and distress around the edges. And there I am putting that right on top to distress it. I'm just gonna hot glue it right on the center. It's so easy. And then I'm gonna take the burnt umber and just kind of go around the edges of my board and the back. I want to make sure everything looks nice and finished. And then I'm going to take a little piece of that basket I've been using and just kind of break off a piece. I'm going to create a little frame with it. I'll just kind of measure and fold and then I'll cut right in that spot with my miter shears and I'll make four pieces and hot glue them around the edges. 
What an easy way to finish off a little piece of wood by giving it a little basket frame. Now I need something for this to stand on. I've got a domino from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna paint the whole thing in the burnt umber, and then I'm gonna put a line of hot glue right across the middle there and set my piece on top, and this one is done. How easy and so, so cute. couple packages of these little plant starters from the Dollar Tree. Got a book, of course, and I just was thinking, what could I do with these? So I put two together just to make it a little sturdier because they're super soft, but you get a lot for $1.25. I'm going to take my pencil and roll up a book page and hot glue the start of it and then roll it all the way down while it's still on the pencil, and then I'll hot glue the very end of it. And then because I didn't glue it to the pencil, it just pulls right off. So I made as many of those as I would need to wrap around this plant starter. So now I'm going to kind of measure it and see if, you know, they're too tall. So I'm going to cut them down. I'm going to have one to start, and that'll be my guide for cutting all of the rest of them. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So there they are, and then I'm gonna hot glue them to the sides. Now, because this thing is wider at the top than the bottom, they don't all lay perfectly, but I thought, you know, that kind of adds to the charm. So I'm gonna go with it. So some will be a little sideways, not sideways, a little tilted, angled, some will be straight up. But in the end, I really love the way it looks. So I'm gonna just go ahead and hot glue them all, all the way around this little plant starter. You know, you could do this with a jar, you could do this with another vase, whatever you want. See how it looks? And then I'm going to take my burnt umber paint and I'm going to go over those top where I cut the books or just where the book ends and just do some dry brushing and it gives it a little more rustic look, I think. And I'm going to do the same exact thing on the bottom, but I'm also going to paint the bottom because it's sort of a terracotta color. I'm going to paint the whole thing with that brown burnt umber because the inside of the plant starter already is brown. So I figured that just makes it look like it belongs. Super easy. I mean, honestly, this is so easy. You don't even have to do it perfectly. That's the beauty of it. It has more character when you kind of don't make it perfect, I think. Now that it's all done and dried, I'm going to take these carnations and these evergreen picks I got on Amazon. I'm going to put a couple plastic bags inside to space it so it's not as deep. And I'm just going to place the flowers that I snipped off that pick right in there. I think there's um, four or five of them. It's good to do things in odd numbers, I've been told, so I'm trying to do that. And then I'm just going to add my two evergreen picks and it's so cute but i do want to make sure you can't see inside so i'm going to take another one of those little garland picks that i was using before from dollar tree i'm going to wrap it around the inside of that little plant starter and then you will only see that and you can't see inside and that just takes care of it i didn't think like moss would look good in there this time because it's kind of a winter type thing but i think this works perfectly and look how cute that is and it just looks beautiful For this project, I'm going to take another little wood square that I got and I'm going to use my square ruler and I'm going to figure out dividing it into thirds. So I'm going to put little marks wherever I can, you know, create the thirds and then I'll do it on both sides. So I end up with like kind of a hashtag, if you will. And what I'm doing is I looked online for barn quilts and I found a pattern of one I really liked and that's what I'm drawing. I'm drawing a barn quilt. Now, I don't know the name of it. I forgot to look for that, but it's okay. It doesn't even matter. I'm going to use my little wood burning kit. I haven't used it before, but I decided to do it today. I don't think I really needed to in the long run, but I wanted to try it out. So I did. And there is my little barn quilt. Now I'm going to take several different pieces of the Dollar Tree fabric. I'm going to trace using where I did the wood burner so I can, you know, have the grooves to get into. I'm going to cut little pieces and I am going to glue them on with my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue all of the little pieces and I'm gonna make a barn quilt on this little piece of wood. I don't know where I got this idea, but I just I just thought of it actually, and I just think it is so super cute and it fits the rustic theme. Now, you couldn't see where I did the wood burner as much, so I took the furniture marker in walnut and I just kinda tapped along the lines. And because it's fabric, it kinda bled a little and it looked really cool. So I just went ahead and I did that at every possible intersection on this quilt square. And then I did the back as well. And then I took a little scrap piece of wood that I had and I cut it down and I'm going to cover that also in that furniture marker and I'm going to sand around the edges and then I'm going to hot glue right down the middle and that'll become the stand. Super easy, so cute, very rustic and it's going to look so cute on my fall tier tray. What do you think? Kirkland's dupe I'm doing a lavender arrangement in a rustic watering can. Now they're asking $45. I know I can make this for less.
Now mine's not a watering can. It's more like a container you'd see in a restaurant like that holds syrup, but it was missing the lid. I found that at a thrift shop, picked it up for I think $1.99, great deal. Then I'm going to do the faux galvanized metal technique. Take some black paint, I'm using the ink color by Waverly, and just dab it on. I'm using a little makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of the metallic silver paint from Folklore. And again, just dabbing that on just to, you know, kind of lighten up the black a teeny bit. And then I'm going to use a little bit of white and do the same thing. Just dabbing it all over. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm not spreading it. Just making little dabbing marks. And then after that, the next color I'm going to use is a gray. It's going to be steel from the Waverly Chalk Paint line. And I'm going to be putting that all over it, including the inner rim, because that might be seen. So I'm trying to do everything that's going to be seen. Now, I learned this technique from a channel called Chalk It Up Fancy. It's a mother-daughter team, and they do a lot of amazing tutorials. And I've learned so much of my special techniques from them. And I'll put their channel link down in my description as well. The last thing I'm going to do is use some burnt umber from Apple Barrel Paint. You can get those at Walmart. And I literally just dab around all the edges and seams and places where you might find some rust or serious wear and tear. And it's amazing how it gives that look. It's so good at that. And I know people use all different colors for this, but I will say burnt umber is my favorite for this technique. Does anyone else think it's funny that we clean off these items with alcohol and then turn around and do a painting technique to make them look dirty and rusty? <laughs> I just think that's kind of funny how we do that. Oh well, at least I know it's clean, right? <laughs> I got this little roll of burlap from Walmart and I'm going to cut a strip. I don't want those seamed edges involved in this. I want everything to look very, very, you know, rustic like the picture from Kirkland. So I'm going to cut off both of the edges and then I'm going to pull some of the thread of the burlap on either side to create a little bit of a frayed edge. And I do that after it's attached because that's when I thought of it. <laughs> so now I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and at first it didn't want to stick because I think I missed the mark on where the burlap was. So I go back in and I've got it now and I'm going to use my little applicator for makeup that I got I think on Amazon I can link that down below too that way I don't burn my fingers I used to burn myself all the time you guys oh my gosh so now I'm fraying it And then I'm going to add a little bit of the rope that I have and tie around and make a very simple bow just like the picture. I'm also going to put a couple of dabs of hot glue to keep the bow in place because I want it to lay, you know, a certain way so it looks just like the piece that I'm trying to replicate. I have several picks of lavender that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to arrange them inside what is now a vase I guess and I'm going to cut off the end so that it's just the right height to fit in there and look as similar to the picture as possible and I do actually end up adding another one when you see the final reveal because I thought it just needed to be a little bit fuller. I really love how this piece turned out. It's funny I don't decorate my house with super rustic things but I love making them. Go figure. My husband loves this one too. I think he wants it now in his office. Pretty soon all my crafts are going to end up in his office. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys like it. I think it looks a lot like the original one other than having a pouring spout. Other than that, I think it came out great. So let me know what you think.
project I've got my Dollar Tree fabric and then I've got these sticks and I'm just gonna use my miter shears and cut them down I'm gonna make a mini ladder so there was already a piece that worked perfectly with another piece sort of attached to it so I just used that as my base and then I created another side and the three pieces and I'm just gonna make sure they're cut to the right lengths and then I will hot glue them down to each other Once I have this set, I'm gonna take some jute twine and I'm gonna start by hot gluing it on the back and I'm gonna wrap it around each intersection so there's six of them. And I wanna end up with an X over the middle of each intersection and then a piece around the top and bottom. So I just did that and you can do this any way you want. That's just what I decided. And there it is, all finished. Now I cut a little piece of this fabric and I'm gonna figure out how long it needs to be. I wanna make a mini ladder blanket. You know how you hang blankets on those little ladders? So I'm just gonna cut a piece that I think is about the right size. And then of course I end up trimming it down even more when I'm done. And I'm gonna fray the ends and I'm just gonna fold it and hang it over the middle rung of the ladder. So cute, so easy. I am just loving these little mini pieces. They are adorable. I felt like this just needed one more thing, so I took a piece of the basket I've been, I took apart and been using, and I just cut little pieces and I made a little rustic star, and I'm gonna hot glue it to another piece of the fabric just to kind of fill it in. I'm just gonna cut around the edges, and I wanted something that would make it easier to glue it to the sticks, and that worked really well. This turned out so cute. Let me know what you think. I'm going to take four wood slices that I got at Hobby Lobby and they're not all the same sizes. I've got some leaves from a pick and then I've got four different colors of the Waverly chalk paint. There's lacquer, maize, fern, and moss. Now what I'm doing is the first one I'm going to paint red right up to that very edge where you see the bark from the tree and I did three of them that way and then for the last one I'm going to take both the fern, I think actually I did the I did the moss color and then the maze on this one. And I'm gonna use my mister, I'm gonna spray it, and I'm gonna create some of those highlights and make it more look like a green apple that has a little bit of the yellow highlights on it. And I'm just blending the colors to get what I think a, a green apple would look like. They're usually a little brighter than just regular green. Then I'm going to take one of the apple, the red apple ones, and I'm going to put some highlights on that as well. So on the right side, a little bit on the left, and then just kind of darken it to make sure it's not overwhelming. I'm not going to, not going to do too much on these. And then I'm going to leave the other two red ones just as they are. I'm going to take the Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel and I'm going to go around those edges and just darken where the bark is. I just want to make it look like it's all the same color. So you've just got the apple color and the edges and I think that looks really cute. Then I'm going to take some Mod Podge I'm going to cover the tops of all of them. Once that dries, I need to cut my little leaves. I'm going to put two leaves on each apple, but I need a place to stick them. And then I've got some little sticks to make stems. So I'm going to get out my drill and very carefully with my smallest little drill bit, I'm going to drill a very small hole into the top of each apple. So I have a place to stick the stem and the little leaves, and I will hot glue them to each of the four apples. And the reason I had a couple smaller ones is if you have smaller cups or bottles or whatever, they don't have to be huge to cover the bottom of whatever you're setting on it. And I thought it looked cuter that they were different shapes. I've got this cork sheet from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna trace on the back of it the size of each of the little coasters, and I'm gonna cut it out, and then I'm going to adhere those to the back of the coasters. And then the last one, I just pieced two pieces together because I didn't wanna waste any, and it worked perfectly to do that. When you put the cork on the back, that's a perfect solution for creating coasters. And then I'm gonna trim around the edges with my rotary cutter just to get off any little pieces of cork that might've you know, hung over. You guys, I love it. This is so cute. I'm gonna take some buffalo check or gingham fabric that I found at a thrift store. I'm just gonna rip off a strip. If you just cut one little piece and then start to rip, it'll rip right off. And then I'm gonna tie it around the four coasters and make a little bow. And that's how they can sit when you're not using them. I'm gonna put a little dovetail on these just by folding it in half, cutting towards the top, and then I'm just gonna make my bow. You guys, I love this one. It's just so, so cute. And I hope you guys like this one because I really, really like it. This is 
another thing that I found on Pinterest, but it was pretty expensive at somewhere between $24 and $34, and I thought, I'm going to make it. So again, I'm using one of my creamer containers that I have saved, and I'm using a blade to cut off the top. And then I'm gonna trim it even shorter than that after I remove the wrapper. I'm gonna cut in one of the grooves because I think I can get a straighter line if I do it that way. Otherwise, I'm kinda all over the place. I'm gonna take my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna sand around the whole outside of this container because I want the paint to stick and it's a little bit smooth. And then I'm also gonna run it over the bottom and the top just to make sure that everything is kind of roughed up. Now I'm using that Kills Primer white paint that I like to use and I'm gonna give it a good solid coat and it really doesn't take much to cover since it was already white. I have this greenery pick that I got at the Target dollar spot and it's got these little pieces that when you cut them off they can lay flat so I've hot glued them to the side all the way around and then a couple up a little higher and I'm just going to make sure all the little edges are secure and then I'm going to give it a coat of the white paint right over the top. Next, I'm going to use the color Truffle from the Waverly Chalk Paint, and I'm going to distress over the top. Now, I'm not going super heavy, but I'm also not going too light. I can go back and forth with the lighter color if I need to, to get just what I'm looking for, and I actually do that several times. Here, I'm hitting it again with the white because I thought it was a little bit too dark. Now in the inspiration piece, it had a little touch of blue in it. So I'm going to use one of my Arteza markers. You're going to see how I'm going to, there it is. I'm just going to put it around the edge of the top and just over a little bit of the little, they're supposed to look like pine trees. And then I'm using this hard kind of plastic bristle brush and I'm writing on it with the marker. And then I'm very lightly putting that on the sides and it gives me just the right effect, just the right amount of blue. Now I am going to go back over the trees a little bit because the blue looked like like I was just putting little lines on it. So I'm gonna use the truffle and kind of cover some of the blue, and then I'm gonna go back over it again with the white. It's a back and forth process till you get what you want. And eventually I do, and then I distress the rest of it a little bit, and I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more greenery on the inside. I'm just gonna trim some pieces. I'm gonna use some of the Spanish moss to fill in and I'm gonna hot glue that kind of around the sides so I don't have to fill up the entire thing. And I'm just thrilled with how it turned out. It's pretty close to the original, just a little bit of a different shape, but I really like it. I hope you guys like it. The inspiration piece didn't have these white flowers, but I really like them, so I added them, and I'm glad I did. I think it was just the right touch. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is another super easy DIY. I'm going to take seven corks to make a little apple and I'm going to use the lacquer paint. I'm gonna take the corks and just paint solid on the both ends of the little cork and then I'm gonna dry brush all around the sides of it and you'll see me doing that next. Now I'm gonna make two of them so that's why there's so many corks. And then I'll also need a cork for the stem. So there they are, all done. And now I'm gonna take two of the corks, I'm just gonna hot glue them right next to one another. Then I'm gonna take three corks and hot glue those three right next to one another. And then I'm gonna take two more corks and hot glue the two right next to one another. So you'll have two stacks of two, and one stack of three. I'm gonna take the stack of two and hot glue it to the top of the stack of three, or the, should I say they're side by side. Then I'm gonna turn that over and I'm gonna hot glue the other set of two on the other side of the set of three. And that makes a cute little apple shape.
Then I'm gonna take a utility knife. I'm gonna cut at an angle on a cork that I have not painted. And I'm gonna just, so I end up with two pieces that are cut at an angle. And then I will cut the opposite angle to kind of create like a triangle on the bottom because that's what's gonna attach to the top of the apple. So you see how I put it between the two corks at the top. So I'm just gonna stick a little, um, my Cricut tool in there so I can paint it with the burnt umber and make a brown stem. And once I get that all painted, I'm going to take that and I'm gonna hot glue it right to the top of the apple and I'll do the same thing on the second apple that I made off camera. And I've got these two little leaves that I cut off of a pick, I think it's eucalyptus, and I'm just gonna hot glue them right there on top by the stem. And that's it, this could not be easier. These would be so cute on a tiered tray and I love it, I hope you guys like it too. This Dollar Tree Hula Hoop DIY is a three part. So this is part one and this is the vase portion. So I've got that glass vase from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna take my hula skirt, I'm just gonna cut a piece and kind of double and triple it up and see how much I need to go around the rim and how much I need to go from the piece at the rim down to the bottom. And now what I'm doing here is I'm gonna do a lark's head knot. I'm gonna show you in slow motion. I take the piece I'm gonna attach it to and I put that horizontal. Then I put the loop side underneath. I stick my fingers in between, as you see here, and then I grab the lower portion of it and I pull it through. Pull that tight and that is a lark's head knot. And I'll show you one more, not quite as slow, but just a little bit slow so you can see it. And then I will show you once they are all on there because I'm just gonna repeat the same thing. So there they are. And now I'm just going to take this whole piece and hot glue it to the rim of the vase. And then I'm just gonna move around the little pieces with the Lark's Head Knot and kind of distribute them as evenly as I can around the vase. This reminds me of a Chianti bottle. So now I'm gonna take one from one knot and one from the knot next to it, if you can see that, and I'm just going to tie another knot and hot glue it down where the widest portion of this particular vase is. You could do this anywhere or any way that you want or as many times as you want. And I'm just gonna keep going around and hot gluing. You see how I've gone all the way around? And I always take one piece from one knot and one piece from the knot next to it. Now I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna make another knot at the bottom and then I will hot glue that to the base down at the bottom, but just before it is where you where it sits on something, because I don't want it to be lopsided and kind of like wobbly. And there they all are, and I trim them. Then I'm gonna take another piece of the hula skirt, I'm gonna twist it, and I'm gonna start hot gluing it to each of those little knots, and that's gonna be the bottom or my base. And that kind of finishes it off. And now on to part two of this DIY. Part two of this Dollar Tree hula skirt DIY. I'm gonna take some skewers and the hula skirt, and I'm gonna make some leaves. So I'm gonna cut off about as much as I want to fill up that skewer stick. And I'm gonna do lark's head knots again, which you have already seen. So just gonna put, fold it in half, put the loop under the stick and pull the other pieces through. And I'm just gonna do that all the way down to the line I drew for myself to know how big I want this leaf to be. And I'm not gonna pull them super tight just yet, but I am gonna hot glue the first one to the top so it doesn't fall off the top there. Now I'm just gonna continue making all of the different pieces or the lark's head knots on there. Once I have all of the ones that I need on there, they're all gonna be on one side, but what I wanna do is take every other one and flip it to the other side. Now, I could have done this as I was going, but I didn't want them to get messed up as I was pulling the pieces through, so it's just easier to do it after. And then I'm gonna scoot them up real tight. I'm gonna cut off the excess. And then I'm just gonna kind of brush it out with my fingers. I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and I'm gonna spray it a little first with my water mister bottle. I just don't want it to be too heavy of a coat. I'm just gonna cover the whole thing with Mod Podge. Then I'm gonna take some parchment paper. I'm gonna lay a piece over the top and I'm just gonna take my little iron and just go over that. I wanna stiffen this up faster. And then I just carefully remove my parchment paper. So I've already cut one leaf out based on this little leaf I have from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna cut this one out like a little maple leaf. And I just kinda of drew the pencil on there where I wanna make my cuts and I'm just gonna use scissors and cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just kind of a cute little thing and it just got that kind of farmhouse boho feel to it, but it's gonna be very fall. So there are my two leaves. Now what I'm gonna do is take some pumpkin 
and some maize chalk paint by Waverly. The first leaf I'm just going to do in the pumpkin, but I'm gonna water it down first by spraying some water on it with my mister. And I'll do both sides of them. And then I'm gonna take the maize and I'm gonna do half of this leaf and then I'm gonna do a little bit of the other side and then I'm gonna use that pumpkin color and kind of blend it in so it looks like it's a leaf in the midst of changing colors. And I just love this look and I think these are gonna be so cute in this project. Now I'm gonna add some more hula skirt, just gonna wrap it around the rest of the skewer stick by using a little bit of Mod Podge and just wrap it around, cut it off at the end and secure it. And I'm gonna do that to both of the leaves. For part three of this Dollar Tree hula skirt project, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a doubled up piece of the hula skirt and I'm just gonna make a loop and then pinch it in the middle and use some twine to tie that off. And I'm gonna do four of these. I'm gonna trim off the twine and these are gonna be petals of a sunflower. So what I'm gonna do is put some hot glue in the center and then take the second piece and put it perpendicular. Then I'll put the next piece at an angle and the last piece at the final angle that fills in the flower. And then what I'm gonna do is take my mister and I'm just going to spray both sides of this flower and I'm going to use the maize color by Waverly and just very lightly brush both sides to give it a slight yellow look. And I'm going to go through my button stash and I found this cute button that has a flower in the center and I'm going to cut out a little piece of natural burlap and I'm going to put that on the back side just to cover the knots that I made. Then I'll turn it over and I'm gonna take some orange burlap. I'm gonna hot glue the button right onto it and then I'll just cut it out with a little border of the orange showing. And then I will hot glue that right to the center and that makes my adorable sunflower. This was so easy and cute. I'm gonna take a skewer stick and I'm just going to stab it in to where I attach the burlap with some hot glue. And then I'm just gonna wrap some more of the hula skirt around the entire stem and glue it at the end and that's it. And now you're gonna to get to see the whole project with all three parts coming together. This is one of my favorites. You'll have to let me know what you think. I absolutely love this one and I hope you do too. Bowl hack is so cute. Got one bowl and then I've got that rope from Walmart, which by the way, it's very inexpensive. The celery colored chalk paint and I'm just going to paint the inside of the bowl. There's really no reason to paint the outside because it's going to be covered with the rope. Of course, use my heat tool to dry it and then I'm going to use some Mod Podge for the inside. That way if I put things in this bowl, they won't scratch the paint. Now I've turned the bowl over and I'm going to take my hot glue and take the rope and I slowed it down so you can see I'm just going to kind of start winding it around itself. Almost look like a flat little spiral. You'll see it in a second. And then I'm going to set that right on that little bit of hot glue that I put there. And I'm going to start what will be a spiral going around and around and around to cover the entire bowl. And you'll see right when I lift my hands what the start of it looks like. And then I will just keep adding hot glue and I'll just go around and around. And I do use hot glue for the entire thing. I don't want part of it to lift up. I think that's risky in this particular situation. And then I'll skip ahead and show you when I've got a little bit more of it done. It's looking really nice. And then I'm going to take two pieces of rope and I made them the same size and I'm going to attach them with hot glue to one to each side and it will become the handle. And once it's attached, I will continue wrapping the rope around and that way you won't even see where I've attached the handle. I mean, there'll be a little kind of bump in the rope, which you will see at the end, but it looks really cool. And so this is just the best way to secure that and that way no matter what that rope is on there really good and if there's something a little bit heavier in the bowl it will be able to handle it. Huh? No pun intended, the handles can handle it. <laughs> anyway, and if you notice there's a little crack in my bowl, I don't know how I did that, but it's going to be wrapped in the rope so it's really going to be stable when it's all said and done. So now the second handle's on and I'm going to continue the wrapping around and around. I won't show you the whole thing. And there it is. So I think that looks really nice and it just makes it much more secure. And then I'm gonna take these two corks and I'm gonna cut them to the same size. I end up taking another one and I'm gonna use these to make legs for the bottom of this bowl. And I just think it's so cute. It makes it very rustic. I'm going to take a pen and mark where I want them to be so I don't forget and get them on there pretty evenly. And then I'm going to use E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to secure each one so that it will stay in place while I finish this project. 
Now, because they're not all the same color, I took some cashew and hazelnut chalk paint by Waverly and I mixed them together. I'm trying to get a color that complements the cork color. So I end up adding some antique wax and then I really like what it looked like. And I'm just gonna paint the very bottom of the legs and a little band around the bottom and leave the cork for the rest of it. And I think that is just a really nice look. It almost came out kind of khaki. I love this one, so easy, I hope you like it. I am going to turn it into a faux wood looking piece. I'm gonna use this Kills All Purpose Primer first and then my Antique Wax by Waverly. It's gonna cover the center because all the reflection of the lights and then my face while I'm concentrating. Who wants to see that? Anyway, I'm gonna apply the primer and I'm gonna go all in one direction. And there it is, the whole thing covered, including the sides. Then I'm gonna take my antique wax and very carefully, I'm gonna go all in one direction. What I'm doing is trying to make it look like wood grain. And if you do this just right, I mean, just carefully and keep going over to make sure it's all going the right direction, like grain, it will work perfectly. In the center part, I just go around like a circle to make it look like that's the grain. Anyway, I go through the whole thing and I do a couple coats until it looks the way I want it. You can do it to any you know depth that you like, depending on the color kind of, of wood you would have wanted. And it's amazing how much it looks like wood. Isn't that beautiful? I was inspired to make this video after watching Shannon from The Daily DIYer and she loves to take the same item at Dollar Tree and make other things and I thought, ooh, I want to try that too. I'll leave her link down in the description box so if you don't know her, you can check her out. She's awesome. And now that's how it looks. I love it, you guys. I just think the whole faux wood look thing is awesome. Now I am going to deal with that center here just in a second. I'm gonna take some hot glue and I'm gonna take some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. It's a pretty thick piece and I want it that way because I want it to cover. I didn't want to paint in there because inevitably I will get it on the mirror every time. It doesn't matter if I tape or not, I just will. So this will save me some cleanup. I'm just gonna snip off the end and hot glue and there I am concentrating. I definitely have that concentrating face going on. <laughs> anyway, I love the way this one turned out. I think it's gorgeous, so easy. You could do this to pretty much anything to create that faux wood look. And since I'm afraid of fire, I'm cutting off the little rope wispy things. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Tree hula skirt DIY project. I've got this frame from the Dollar Tree, these little stickers from the Dollar Tree, and a placement from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use my Rust Oleum linen white chalk paint. I'm going to sand around all of the parts of the frame that I'm going to paint just to make sure the paint's going to stick. And I taped off the glass part. I'm going to do two quick coats on that and dry it off with my heat tool. Then I'm going to remove the tape and then I'll just use a blade if I get any little spots on the glass. I'm going to use the inside of the frame as like a template to cut my little square from the placement. And I will go ahead and cut that out. And then I'm gonna position the little, it's like a 3D sticker right on top of that, right in the middle. I'm gonna take about four or five strands of the hula skirt and I'm just going to bunch it together and start on the inside of the frame and hot glue it. And I'm gonna wrap it around each of the four sides but excluding the actual corners. And I'm just gonna create a really cool kind of boho farmhouse look with this. But I also think it's very fall and I think it could be changed up to kind of look like you would want it for any season. And that's one of the things I love about this piece. It's so easy and it's versatile. So I'm literally gonna wrap around that side and when I get to the end of the side, I will just hot glue the little pieces of the hula skirt back inside the back of the picture frame. And I will do that on all four sides, again, excluding the corners. And now I have all four sides done. I'm just gluing down any little stray pieces and that's what the back would look like. I'm gonna take the Burnt Umber Acrylic Paint by Apple Barrel and just super lightly dry brush on the four corners that are still exposed because I wanna give it a little bit more of a rustic look as well and that'll help it stay in that little boho farmhouse world. And now I'm just gonna glue the glass back on in the four corners using the hot glue and then I will take 
my piece that has the little sticker on it and I will glue that to the backing of the frame from the inside and then I will hot glue the frame back on and that's it. It could not be any easier. You could put a bow, you could add leaves, whatever you want. And I just love how it turned out. Barkeeper round tray. This is a set of two. I'm only going to make one and it was $92 for two. So that's still $46 for one. I'm going to use these paint stir sticks that I ordered on Amazon and they don't have the curvy part so I really like them. And then I use two of the Hot Wheel tracks from the Dollar Tree. Waverly paint ink and steel and then the folk art paint metallic silver. And what I'm going to do is start off with my Kills White Primer and I'm going to do almost three coats on both sides of these tracks. Now I cut one of them in half then I added the steel color over the top after I had done several coats and that is just to cover that white but you only need to do one coat of that because then I'm going to take the ink color and with a stiff brush I'm just going to dab it all over and I'm going to do that faux galvanized metal technique. Next comes white. I'm just going to dab that all over, both sides by the way, and then the metallic silver and I'm going to dab that just to dull down the white and the black a little bit and that's what kind of gives it that galvanized look. Now I'm going to take these two pieces of the track and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to attach them to each other. There's holes at both ends except for the one I cut so I'm going to use my crop dial which is also from Amazon and I'm going to make a hole on that other end so I have something to attach it with. Then I'm going to line them up and see how that's going to look and I'm going to mark it and I'm going to take a blade and cut off the raised piece because I want it to lay flat on top of the other one when I overlap them and by getting rid of that little raised piece of the track I can accomplish that. And then I can use E6000 and hot glue combination and get those pieces to stick together. Then I'm gonna take a clamp and hold them together because otherwise it just pops off until it dries. And then I'm temporarily gonna put a clamp on the other side until I'm ready to glue it. And I'm gonna draw a circle on my paper that's just on my desk because I need to create that wood base. So I'm gonna use those paint stir sticks and I'm gonna start cutting them with my miter shears from Amazon. And I'm using that circle that I drew on the paper as a way to determine how many pieces and how big I need them to be. And as I measure, I'm just drawing the lines where the circle will be. Now I'm going to glue them all together with a combination of hot glue and this liquid adhesive from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna wipe off the excess and this is gonna create my entire piece. Now I'm gonna double check again the measurement. I'm gonna put that ring over the top. I'm gonna reinforce with some more glue. And then I'm going to use my blade and I'm going to start cutting off the excess around that circle. You just score it till it all comes off piece by piece. Next I'm going to sand my wood. I want to get rid of the pencil marks and anything else. Then I'm going to take the Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm going to paint that on there and then wipe off the excess basically to stain the wood. And I'm going to do that on both sides and around the edges. And now I'm going to take that ring that I created and I'm going to do a combination of hot glue and E6000 to attach it all the way around. Next I'm going to take my steel paint and where the wood shows on the bottom I'm just going to paint that with the steel so it all looks cohesive. I'm going to take some wired jute cord from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut two pieces that will be the handles and then I'm going to cut out of this tin baking pan from the Dollar Tree a couple of pieces that I'm going to wrap around each edge of those handles and then I'm going to paint it all with the steel paint so it looks like it is metal that is welded on there and the rope will actually look like a handle. And now I'm going to take my little tin pieces, wrap them around the edge of each side of that painted jute. And then once I'm done doing that and assembling them, I will hot glue them to each side of my tray. And I just use a little hot glue as I wrap it around the jute and I attach it two times to make sure when I first start and at the end, that way it's on there good and it's not going to go anywhere. Next, 
I'm going to take these two little pop-up dots from the Dollar Tree stickers I'm going to paint two of them steel and then cover the holes that were there on the tracks. And it's going to end up looking like, you know, a rivet or a bolt that's there and it just looks like it's supposed to be there. And now I'm going to attach those little handles. Yeah, they're not really functional, although you could pick it up because this is very light. But this is more of a decor piece than a functional piece. This is going to be just fine with hot glue. Of course, you could use E6000 if you really felt better about it. And after the handles attached, this is complete. This was really fun to make, and I think it came out actually pretty cool. And I love that I used the Hot Wheel tracks. I have a picture frame from the Dollar Tree, 8x10, and then I've got a little piece of cardboard that I'm going to use my Cricut just to kind of score out a shape of a bunny because, you know, freehanding it won't come out. It is nice. So I just ran it through and now I'm just going to cut it out. It didn't go all the way through the cardboard. I don't have the right blade for that. I'm going to take everything out of my frame, you know, the backing and the glass and so forth, so that I can start working on what I'm going to do to the frame. I decided to use my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint, which I got from Amazon to paint the frame. I'm just gonna go around and paint it. I'm not trying to get like a very solid coverage because I will be distressing it. So I've done the whole entire front sides and the back. Now I'm going to take the inside portion that has the stand on it and I'm going to figure out with some paint sticks that I also got at Amazon how many I need to actually fit across the whole thing and create some kind of faux shiplap planks. Now I'm going to tape them all together and I used my square to make sure they were all even. That way when I put them in my little, you know, box miter saw, they'll stick together and I can cut them all at one time. You see how nicely that's happening? And then I'm just going to sand the ends and I'm going to use my Aliens Quick Dry Tacky Glue, which I'm really liking by the way. I ordered that on Amazon as well. And um, I'm just going to glue each one of the planks and they fit perfectly now on there. And all I have to do at the end is just sand around the edges just a teeny bit. I'm going to use my little Dollar Tree clamps to hold them in place. And there they are. Now I'm going to sand the entire surface with my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some burnt umber uh, acrylic paint from Apple Barrel and mix it with some water. And I'm going to use a little foam brush and I'm just going to apply it across the whole thing and basically treat it like a stain. And I didn't even rub it off because it was just fine the way it was. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that Rust-Oleum white linen chalk paint and I'm just going to dry brush across the top. Now I've got this cute piece of material from many years ago. I'm just going to cut it a smaller piece and I'm going to use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, which is great for fabric. I learned about this from my friend Linda at Faith Chick 777's DIY and Design, and I'll put her link down in the description box. And I got that on Amazon too. And I'm going to apply that to the bunny and I'm going to put my fabric right on it. I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to roll right over the top of that and make sure it's adhering really well. And I'll take some scissors and cut it out. And I'll use a blade for any little pieces I couldn't get with the scissors. Now I am going to take that white paint again and I'm just going to go around the edges and make it bleed a little over onto the front. I'm going to hot glue the bunny right on to the middle of my planks and then I'm going to take some Mod Podge. I'm going to use matte. And I'm just going to do the wood plank. So I didn't want to do it before the bunny was on because I didn't think the bunny would stick as well. And all I have to do now is put it in the frame. But I decided I just don't want to distress that frame. So I just take a nail file and go all the way around. You guys, this is so easy. It came out so cute, very rustic and I really, really love it. It. One of the great things about this is you can use any fabric or scrapbook paper or napkins if you like. You could paint it any color and just customize it to your decor. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Dollar Tree Mirror, we're going to be all about nature. I'm going to use a bunch of sticks that my husband gathered from our yard and I'm going to use some of this Spanish moss that I got at Walmart. And then my burnt umber apple barrel paint that's from Walmart. I'm going to put something in the center to cover it and then I'm going to paint the whole mirror in the apple barrel color. And the reason I'm doing that is just so that it blends more with the sticks. I mean more or less with the sticks. I don't think that silver blends as well. And I'm going to start gluing the sticks right to those main little sunburst pieces if 
if you will, and I'm using snips to cut them, but it wasn't working, so I had to pull up my miter shears from Amazon, one of my favorite tools. Not sure why I didn't grab it first, but really glad I did because it went a lot faster. And I just used one as a guide, and then I cut a bunch. And then I'm going to fill in with more sticks. So basically, I'm just going to put a lot of sticks where those sunburst things are sticking out. I don't know what to call them exactly, the rays of it, whatever it is. Anyway, it's good. I ended up using tacky glue at first, and then I ended up securing it with hot glue because it just, it wouldn't stick fast enough. It would have been fine, but I wasn't patient and I wanted to keep working. So I ended up just securing it with the hot glue and then I could keep moving and all was well with the world. <laughs> you could actually use anything that you can find outside for this bark, you know, leaves, pine cones, whatever you like. And there it is with all the sticks. And now I'm gonna take the Spanish moss and I can use the tacky glue for this. And I'm just gonna stick it in between the sticks and just kinda of almost make like a nest kind of a feeling. This is like I said, very much nature. And then I'm gonna take these little cotton picks from the Dollar Tree and our pods and I'm going to fluff some of them out and just kind of attach them with hot glue all around. And I just think it's so interesting and very natural. You could use it as a centerpiece, you could hang it on the wall, whatever you want. I just think it's kind of cool. Hey, if you put it outside, I bet some birds would take over. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna do that though. I'm just gonna, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it actually. <laughs> anyway, for you nature lovers out there, this is a great option for you for the Dollar Tree mirrors. I mean, you would never know this was that same mirror. So there you go. <laughs> I hope you guys like it. is super simple. I'm using a coaster, two little pallet planks from the Dollar Tree, some florals from the Target Dollar Spot, some burlap from Walmart, and that's it. And I'm going to attach the two little planks together. And then I'm going to stain them with the antique wax, putting it on and then rubbing off the excess. And I'm going to do both sides on this because that's how I'm going to finish this one off. It doesn't make sense to put craft paper on it because of the slats. And I'm just making sure to cover every single piece of wood with this stain. I am also going to slightly distress the little coaster since it looks like it's got little wood planks on it too. I'm just gonna go ahead and add some of the antique wax to that so that it will match with this kind of a rustic wood theme. I'm going to take the burlap and I'm going to cut out a piece so that it can lay right under the coaster and on top of the wood. And I'm going to fray the edges a little bit. I just want to add that for just that little extra embellishment and kind of that, again, rustic feel. I'm going to use just a little bit of hot glue and be careful if you do this because the hot glue comes right through the burlap and you can burn yourself. I had to be super careful because I always burn myself, but I need to be better. And then I'm also going to hot glue the coaster right on top of that, right in the center. And I'm loving the way that looks, but of course I'm thinking it needs something more. So I've got these little florals. I'm going to cut off some little greenery pieces and position them at the top. I'm gonna add a little flower and I'm also gonna add a little jute bow just because I just feel like it needs something extra. <laughs> I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. For the jute bow, I just wrapped the jute around two fingers until I you know, got it thick enough. And then I tied a little, another piece of jute right in the center. And then I just cut open the loops and literally that's all I did to make that bow super easy and it's really cute. And now I'm just hot gluing down the greenery, kind of like with the stems in the center so that it goes out on each side. And then I will place that little bow. And then in the center of the bow, I'm gonna put a cute little flower. And I think that really finishes this piece off. And I really like it. You know, it's not too many steps. It was super simple to do. You could go without the florals. You could go without the bow, but you know, just do it to the style that it fits your home and what you like. Something 
so rustic about like rag doll type of things and I'm gonna make a kind of a rag doll bunny. So I'm just, I freehanded this one. That's why it's not so great. But anyway, I cut it out on a piece of cardboard. You know, I'm always so inspired by my friend Holly at Hot Humble Pie because she does so much with cardboard. So I thought I should give it more of a try. I'll leave her link down in the description box. You will love her. And then I'm using a piece of a drop cloth and that gives it that kind of rag feel. I'm just gonna trace the shape around it and then I'm going to cut it out. And it's doubled over by the way, because I do need two pieces. We're gonna make it kind of a plushie. And then you see I cut around the lines a little because those are gonna be sort of like my glue seams. I'm not gonna sew this, but you most certainly can. I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> I'm gonna use this pillow stuffing I have right here. And I'm gonna start gluing from the bottom because those are the wider, bigger pieces. And I think it'll make it a lot easier than starting with the skinny little ears. And so once I get enough of the bottom and the sides glued, I'm gonna start stuffing very gently, just little pieces at a time, pushing them around until I get it to the thickness that I want. And I'm not going for anything super thick, just a little stuffing. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of that stuffing and just go little by little, glue a little more on the sides, add a little more stuffing all the way up to the top. And then I'll slow down a little bit to show you how I do the ears. Now for the ears, I'm gonna pull out some little pieces of the stuffing and kind of roll them a little bit so that the bottom is a little wider than the top. That's kind of how the ears are shaped. And then I'm gonna stuff it in. I only glued one side so far of that one ear and I'm gonna push it in and then I will glue down the other side. And I'll repeat the same thing on the other ear and make sure that little spot in between the two ears is sealed as well. And I really do shove that stuffing in there so I can get to the two ends, otherwise you'll glue the stuffing. There it is. And now I'm gonna take my little baby scissors and I'm just gonna cut little teeny slits around the side so that it frays. I took another piece of that scrap material that I'd cut off and I'm creating a little apron. And so it wasn't big enough to just do it outright. So I took two pieces and I'm just kind of gluing down the seams in the middle. You see the little straps around the side and where that seam is, that's gonna be kind of right where the bunny's tummy meets in the middle. glue that down and once I have that glued down except for the very top which will have an opening it's almost like a front pocket even though it looks like an apron then I'm just gonna tie the little straps in the back into a knot and I'll just tack those down with a little teeny bit of hot glue so they don't flop around now I've got these buttons from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna find one that I like I narrowed it down to three and then I finally picked this one <laughs> and then I'm just gonna put some hot glue on it a generous amount and I'm gonna put it right on the little bunny's face I'm only gonna do one side of this bunny I'm gonna take this orange burlap from the Dollar Tree and I kind of just keep folding it until I make like what looks like a carrot shape. And then I'm gonna trim it when I'm done and make it really look like more of a carrot shape. And then I'm gonna take this green twine that I have, I think it's from the Dollar Tree, I'm not actually sure. And I'm gonna wrap it around my fingers several times and cut one side open and then glue the other side kind of to itself. And that will make the greenery that comes out of the carrot. I'm gonna do the same thing with a little bit of jute twine because I want it to be kind of a combination of the green and the tan kind of jute color. And see how it's looking like a carrot now. And this is, I'm not gonna do it as much with the jute. I just wanna add a little accent in there and I'm gluing them together. And then I'm gonna put a little hot glue on the back of the carrot, attach the greenery, and then I cut a little triangle to cover that up, put that right on there. And then I'm just gonna trim the carrot till it's the size that I want. I'm gonna make three carrots. They came out really cute and they were super easy to make. And I'm just gonna test it out and see how it fits in the pocket. And there they are. Now I'm gonna take this mop head and it's like four strands in one and I'm gonna separate them, wrap around my finger. I'm gonna make not a full pom-pom, but kind of like a partial pom-pom. So I, otherwise I would have made it way thicker if it was a full pom-pom. But after I wrap it around a ton of times, keep adding more pieces, I just put one string in the middle and then tie it around one little end. Then I trim that piece and I just start trimming the little pom-pom, like giving it a haircut is gonna be my bunny tail. And I thought that was so cute. Cut out a little like triangle of the back end of the bunny where he would have it and there's a little hole there now and I'm just gonna kind of shove the bunny tail in there and glue it and that worked perfectly and now there are the carrots. I just love this little bunny. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments and I really hope you guys like it too. Farmer's 
market wood platform set. There were two here for 148. I decided to make one and I made it square instead of rectangle. Now this I'm just using paint sticks and some paint so it's really not going to cost very much. The paint sticks are the ones I got from Amazon and that's apple barrel burnt umber paint with some water mixed in to create a stain and I'm going to stain every single piece of the wood all sides edges top bottom. Once that's done, I just looked at the picture and figured out how many I might need for the top. I think I did 12 and then I had for each of the four sides. And then I also decided that in order to do this, I was gonna have to use some of my tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna use my square so I can get a good right angle and I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue and liquid adhesive from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach all my pieces. Now I'm gonna use this only for lightweight things so I wasn't too worried about the weight of it. If I needed this to hold something heavy, I would have absolutely used wood glue. And now I'm just assembling it and I'm taking the cross slats over the top and I'm gonna attach each one and I'm gonna complete that top. Then I'm gonna assemble the sides and the legs. And the legs are what I'm gonna use the tumbling tower blocks for. I'm gonna stain those as well with the mix that I had made. And then I'm gonna take two of the tumbling tower blocks and use a combination of the liquid adhesive and the hot glue together. And then I'm gonna stack that too high. So it's gonna be four tumbling tower blocks for each leg. And then I will attach the side slats that go down a little bit lower. So there's the ones that are up close to the top and then the one I'm putting right now on the side. And of course there's four of those as well. Now this was pretty easy to assemble once I figured out kind of the pattern of it. I think it's really cute, but I did want it to be a little more stable. So I don't know if the other one had this, but I added pieces underneath like crossbars just to make sure that this could hold anything at all, even just little decor pieces. I decided to add one more coat of stain and then I took it outside and did a clear coat over the entire thing. And I love it. What do you guys think? Why I'm going to use a sock and a piece of a sock and I wish I had tube socks it would have been so much better then I'm going to use some burnt umber paint by Apple Barrel and the Fawn Waverly chalk paint I'm going to mix those two together take a baby wipe and rub it all over the socks because I really want it to look kind of like a worn out rag and I didn't want to use the drop cloth because then I would have to deal with all the ends but as a sock it's already solid and I'm just pouring some rice in there I just use a little bucket and rolling the top over to make it easier when I get the first section the way I want it I'm going to tie some twine around it you know twice and make it really secure and then cut off the ends. Then I'm going to add some more rice. Again, if I'd had a tube sock, what's going to happen next would have been so much better. So see that little teeny piece that was left? I needed more. So I had to add another piece of sock, kind of tie it on, and then cut it down the middle to make bunny ears. So imagine if it had been a tube sock. You would have had the ears built in already, and this would have been a much easier process. So if you make this, definitely use a tube sock, okay? <laughs> I didn't have one. It didn't occur to me until I was already this far. Anyway, so now I'm cutting the ears, and you see I've got that big bunch in the middle there. I'm going to have to deal with that later, but I will. I'm going to trim them so they'll be kind of thinner. And then what I'm going to do is fold over as much as I can and hot glue cut a pieces down to cover where that extra piece was attached so you won't see it. And then I'm kind of putting a little bit of hot glue between the ears to hold them together. I'm going to add a couple of buttons from the Dollar Tree to the center for his little bunny outfit. <laughs> then I've got this like poly rope from the Dollar Tree in the automotive section. It's red and I'm just going to kind of wrap it around itself and cut it and hot glue it and make a little nose. Then I'm going to take some twine and I'm just literally gonna add like three whiskers on each side. Just hot glue that right down. Then I'm gonna take some scrap drop cloth that I had and I'm gonna make a little pocket. And I'm gonna hot glue the pocket right onto the side of my little sock bunny.
And there's my pocket once I get the last side attached. Obviously you can sew these kind of things if you want, but this is just so easy to do with hot glue. It's not like it's gonna carry anything heavy. I'm using a jot marker and I am making the little bunny mouth and it doesn't go on as nice as I want. And I'm gonna also make the bunny eyes. So I end up taking a little bit of black apple barrel paint and filling in with a very fine art brush. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of white apple barrel paint and make the little part of the eyeballs. Just kind of dab it on there. And then I've got a little piece of sock that was left over and I kind of cut it into a triangle. I'm just gonna roll it onto itself and hot glue it and make a carrot shape. And then I've got some orange yarn from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna wrap it around hot gluing it as I go and then wrap it up around the top to cover all of the sock. And once I have that all glued down, I'm going to take some of the green twine that I have and I'm going to wrap that around my fingers many times. It doesn't matter, it's up to you how much greenery you want. I'm just going to cut one end, hot glue the other end to itself and then hot glue it directly to the top of the carrot and that makes its little greenery. And I really like how this carrot turned out. Then I've got some buffalo check ribbon. I'm gonna make it a little awareness type ribbon. And then I'm just gonna hot glue it in the center so it'll stay in place. And then I'm gonna take another little piece of plaid black and white ribbon. I'm just gonna hot glue that around the center, give it a cute little center piece. And now I gotta deal with that top of the bunny. So I'm gonna start rolling it up and create kind of like seams. And I'm just hot gluing as I go. And now you won't see so much. I mean, you see it, but the bow's gonna cover it pretty well. And that's the best I could do. Like I said, you really need a tube sock for this one. I still think it came out so, so cute and I really love it. I would love to hear what you think about this one down in the comments. Christmas cottages and there's a set of two. Theirs were $248 and I think they're a lot bigger than mine are so that's probably why but even so that's a lot of money. Now I found these little houses at Hobby Lobby. They were 40% off so I bought a couple of them and then I've got these extra popsicle sticks that I've had for a long time from the Dollar Tree and I have some burnt umber apple barrel paint and some steel Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to mix them together and add a little teeny bit of water as well. Stir it up and then I'm going to paint all of my sticks after I assemble them on the roof. The only thing I really needed to do to these houses is just create the wood roof. So I measured them. I used my miter shears from Amazon to cut these little popsicle sticks, which is super easy with them. And then I literally will hot glue them right to the roof. Now the first one is super easy because there is no chimney. On the second one, I am going to have to cut a couple little pieces to size around the chimney, but it's really not a big deal. And then at the end, I might have a little hangover and I'll use some snips to go ahead and just cut those off. But literally this is a super, super easy dupe in DIY. And now I'm going to take my stain that I created, I'm going to put that all over the roof. And here I'm showing you how I'm going to do the pieces that have to be cut separately on the side with the chimney. Like I said, not complicated, just have to cut down the little popsicle sticks to fit. And here I am snipping off the ends just to make sure that they're more even. And I'm going to sand off the edges and make sure I get everything stained. And then the one other thing that's different is that there is like a piece of metal across the very peak of the roof on both of them. So I'm going to take out my little tin baking pan from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut a couple pieces. I'm going to measure them against the roof line. And then I'm literally going to fold them in half and hot glue them right to the top. And then I'm going to take my steel Waverly chalk paint. And I'm going to dab over that shiny metal because I don't want it to be super shiny. And literally that's it. This one will be done super easy and so, so cute. I love these little houses. They have so much more character now than they did before. You have to tell me what you think. And would you consider doing something like this if you had a little metal house like this at home? Just for fun. Let me know in the comments. a 
another really easy DIY. I am using a DIY that I previously made, but it doesn't really fit my decor, so I decided I would go ahead and use a blade and take off the canvas that I had painted. I'm just gonna pull that all off, and I'll use the canvas, the opposite side that I had painted on for something else. I removed the staples, which are not the easiest thing, by the way. And then I sanded all the way around every surface on this because I just wanted it to not, you know, give me splinters. And I've got this really cool wide ribbon from burlapfabric.com, which I will also have linked down below. I'm just gonna cut a piece that fits across the entire frame, and I'll use that shortly. I'm gonna use my Kills primer, and I am going to just lightly paint every part of this little frame, inside, outside, back, everything. But I'm not gonna do a full coverage because I want it to look distressed, and I want some of that wood to peek through. And I'm going to use my heat tool so that I can dry that quickly and I'll have a link in my Amazon store for that. Now I'm going to use my staple gun and I'm going to attach this piece of ribbon that I cut to the back of my little frame. And I'm going to use quite a few staples because I want it to stay in place. And I do go later and I reinforce with a little bit of hot glue too, you know, just in case it frays. And I have these little teeny sticks that I cut and I'm going to do a little pattern where I kind of go back and forth like V, upside down V, V and cross over the tops and bottoms of each one. I'm going to hot glue those in place. Like I said, this is super simple, very rustic, and it will fit with all kinds of different farmhouse decor, primitive, or you know, just whatever you do rustic. And I just thought it would be really cute to add nature with you know some of my Dollar Tree stuff, and it's an easy project. And I'm going to take a little bit of my antique wax from Waverly and I'm going to use a baby wipe. I'm just going to wipe it on lightly on all of the surfaces where I painted it with the wipe. Now I'm going to take a little piece of rope and I'm going to hot glue that to the back and then reinforce that with a couple of staples as well. So I have a nice little hanger that you won't see when it's hanging up. Off camera I added some little greenery that was rub on stickers from Dollar Tree and I just love it. farmhouse rustic DIY is going to be very rustic. <laughs> I'm using even smaller sticks from that group of sticks that my husband collected for me. And I'm gonna start hot gluing them together. Start with a square and then I put in angles because ultimately I want it to be round. I am making a bird's nest. Now having done this, you guys, I have gained a whole new respect for birds who make nests because I had clippers, I had hot glue, I had someone else collect the sticks for me. I don't know how they do this without hands, basically with just their beaks. It's pretty impressive if you think about it. I'm adding some Spanish moss to the bottom, so that's gonna be the very base of the little nest. And then I'm gonna build up the sides again with more sticks, and then I'll build out from here so that it gets a little wider. So I wanted, you know, like a nest, the center to be smaller, and then as you get to the edges, it gets wider. And I'm gonna to continue to add the sticks till I get it to the size that I want. I'm gonna continue hot gluing the moss on until I think it looks just like a bird's nest. And now that I have the last little pieces of Spanish moss added on, I'm going to start working on making some eggs. I've got two Easter eggs from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use a mop head, but in the mop head, it's basically like three strands, so I'm going to separate them. Otherwise, it's going to be the 
biggest egg ever. So I want to use the thinnest piece of that mop head. I'm hot gluing the two little eggs so they stay shut. And then I'm going to start at the very top. And I'm just going to go around and around and around until I get the entire egg covered in the strand of the mop head. I'm going to do that with both of the eggs. And literally, that's all I'm going to do to them because I want to keep this super simple and very rustic. And I do think they're super cute. Yeah, if you look really closely, you can kind of see the color poking through, but honestly, when they're laying in the nest, you don't notice it as much. And there they are. I'm gonna make a little bow now. I'm taking this cute little blue polka dotted bow from Walmart, and I'm also gonna take that really thin jute twine, and I'm gonna double it up and I'm just gonna tie it around, wrap it around my finger, tie the middle and then cut the ends. And then I'm gonna make a little tail and hot glue the tail to it. I'm also gonna wrap some of the blue ribbon around the center to give it like a pretty little center. And once that is all assembled, I'm just gonna hot glue it right onto the nest. And that's gonna be it, you guys. Oh, I am gonna glue the eggs down so they don't move around, but it's just so cute and so easy. And you could style this any way you want. And it's perfect for spring and, you know, or Easter or whatever. I just, I love it. I love the simplicity of it, but it's so beautiful. Please let me know what you think in the comments and I hope you guys really like it. Project, I'm going to use a leftover ring from a Dollar Tree wreath form that I had. I had used the rest of it. And now I'm just using my little tin snips to cut off those pieces that connected the other rings. Once I take them off, I'm going to bend this and shape it into a heart. It took a little bit of doing, but it is possible, especially once you get the pointed bottom, then you can bend it in. And then I also had to re-flatten it because I had just literally pushed it all out of whack there, but I did get it to lay flat. My husband was kind enough to go out into the yard and collect all different size and lengths of sticks and twigs. So I cut them so I could form them around this heart and basically make a stick heart. And I used my hot glue gun. I'm not gonna show you the entire process because it did take quite a while, but I think you get the idea of what I'm doing. If I find a bent one, I use it for the curve and then I just use smaller pieces to shape the rest. And I went about three high, if you will. Not an exact measurement, but just till I thought it looked full enough and covered the wire form. Once I got the wreath done and I felt like it was thick enough, I took some of my burnt umber paint and I painted the black wire form. I just wanted it to kind of camouflage into the heart itself. The next thing I'm going to do is take this large 11 by 14 frame I got at Dollar Tree. And what I want to do is I want to attach this heart to the glass piece and I want to remove the backing so it'll be like transparent. I found these rub on stickers or decals from Dollar Tree and they're so cute. And so there's this little green wreath and then there's some other pieces. I'm going to put a little one on each of the corners. I am going to attach this heart to the glass. I use some hot glue. I did paint the frame this celery color chalk paint from Waverly. And when I was all done, I didn't like it. So I ended up taping it up and painting it black. You'll see that here coming up. Now, the way I made it look like it was hanging was I took a piece of buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and two pieces of rope, and I just glued those to the edges of that little ribbon, and that's just a faux hanger. It's really hot glued onto the glass where it touches. I've painted the frame black now. I feel much better about that. I added some twine, 
in the middle of the frame. And I really think this finishes off the look, or at least I thought I did. And then I thought, Matt needs a bow. Oh my gosh. So I added a little buffalo check bow that I got at Walmart and I, it was already made. It was the perfect size. And I just trimmed a little dovetail at the ends. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's a very unusual piece. Would you have added the bow? Let me know. books coming out of my ears that I need to donate and so I decided to use some of the book pages for a trash to treasure DIY and so that's what I'm going to do. I've also got this old Yankee candle and it cleaned it out and I took off the label and so that's another piece of trash I'm going to use. So I'm going to rip up some pages from the book, use my premium decoupage solution. It's not Mod Podge but it is like Mod Podge, just not that brand and I'm going to start applying it to the outside of this glass candle holder and then I'm going to lay down the pieces until I've covered the entire thing. And you know, it does take a little bit of time because I cut them up in, or not cut them, I rip them up into small pieces, but I love the look and it's just gonna be so cute when it's all done totally worth it. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm using a foam brush for this because it absorbs that decoupage solution and it's just so easy to put it onto the glass and over the paper because I'm going to be putting it under and over the paper to make sure it's completely stuck to this candle holder. I have all my book pages attached now to the candle holder and I'm going to use a chippy brush and I'm just going to dry brush some of the antique wax from Waverly over it. So basically dry brushing, get a little bit on your brush, wipe off most of it and then apply the rest, just kind of drag it across your surface. And I'm also going to hit the edges and seams if there were any, you know, harder because that's where you would expect to see a little more of the antiquing. And actually when I say antiquing, I just mean wear and tear. I'm going to use a little bit of the faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. It's the darker brown color and I'm going to make a little handle for this. I'm only going to do one. I decided to make this asymmetrical and I'm just going to hot glue and smush it down so you don't get any bumps or ripples. That's the one thing about using hot glue with these. Sometimes you can see little bumps. I'm being really careful about it. And I'm just going to hot glue that on there, you know, even up a little bit higher to make sure it stays in place. Now it's not a functional handle. It's just for looks only. Now, if you've watched my channel very much, you know I love these pop-up stickers. So I'm going to take two of them and leave them on the paper still, and I'm going to paint them black with some ink chalk paint. Then I'm going to take them off, put a dab of hot glue on the back, and attach them to the very bottom of that faux leather ribbon to make it look like little tacks. I don't want the paint to chip or peel, so I'm going to put a little bit of the decoupage solution over the little stickers, and I think that's going to help keep them nice and black. I decided that it needed a little bit more of like a distressed look, so I took some of the antique wax and I painted the inside bottom so it would kind of show through and not look like clear glass. And then of course once I started that, I got a little carried away and I started, you know, brushing around the lid and along the base and anyway, I do like the way it turned out. I just can never leave well enough alone. Does anyone else have that problem or just me? I decided to add some white flowers that I had from the Dollar Tree. They were so pretty. The only thing is they're so white and I wondered should I have put something not so bright in there but then I thought no that's okay and then I added a lily in the center and I thought isn't that just so sweet. You guys I love this. Let me know what you think. DIY, I made a printable using Canva and I will have a link as a free printable for anyone who wants to use it. I've also got a Dollar Tree sign 
some antique wax by Waverly and my white kills primer. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the little shamrock. I'm actually not going to work with that side. I'm going to cover it with some craft paper and I'm actually going to use the back and turn it into the front. There was some burlap on the front, but it was on so good. I just said, oh, forget it. I'm not going to try to take that off. So I used my white primer paint and actually I realized, oh, I better draw my shiplap lines first. So I stopped. <laughs> I actually dried the paint first really quick with a blow dryer so that I could go ahead and do this. And then I'm using a utility knife to actually cut in to each of those lines so I see the difference so they really look like little shiplap planks. And now I'm going back over the one that I did with the paint and I'm going to finish painting. And I'm doing all my paint in one direction so that it looks like wood grain when I'm done with the whole technique that I'm going to do. I added a second coat, but as you can see, I'm not doing a heavy coverage. I'm letting some of the background peek through, and that's just gonna to add to what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm gonna take the antique wax, and I'm actually going to take a little brush and go through each of those lines that I carved out. And this is a technique that I learned from Jackie at Bless Beyond Measure, and I will link her channel down in the description box. It's such a cool thing. I take a blending brush, and at, while it's still wet, and I just kind of go over it, and I blur it. And you can see there, it looks kind of funny right now, but it's gonna look really good when it's all done. And now I'm taking a screwdriver, I guess, and I'm actually going back through those little lines that I carved out, and this really makes it look like separate pieces of wood. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. I'm gonna take my printable and I'm gonna use a technique that I learned from my friend Holly at Hot Humble Pie. I'll leave a link for her channel down in my description box. So you spray a little water around the edges of the printable and then you go ahead and rip the edges. So that gives it a really nice kind of rustic vintage look. And then I'm going to go ahead and use Aileen's decoupage stuff. It's like a Mod Podge. And I'm going to attach that to my sign. Once I have that attached to the sign, I'm gonna go over the top again with some of that decoupage premium liquid. Once that dries, I'm going to take a utility knife and I'm just gonna cut through those lines but over the top of the paper and that way it looks like, again, they're all individual little planks. Now I'm taking my antique wax and I'm going to lightly go over each of those plank lines again on the part of the printable that had not yet been distressed. So I'm going to do that for all of them and then I'm going to blend it in and then I'm going to distress the rest of that side because it's so much whiter than the rest of it and I want to try to make it look, you know, as vintage as possible. I felt like the colors were almost a little too vibrant on my printable, so I added some extra antique wax on there to just dull them a little bit. And I just think that really helped a lot. And then I used a baby wipe to wipe it off. And I kind of kept going back and forth, putting some on, taking it off until I felt like it was distressed enough. Next, it was time to cover the back with my craft paper. So I just 
cut a piece and then hot glued it and trimmed the edges. And that makes it have such a nice finished look. Plus then you won't see all of the St. Patrick's Day stuff on the back. In my stash, I had this little piece of leather and it was just perfect to make a hanger and it just fit the theme kind of so rustic. So I poked the holes through the craft paper because there were already holes in the sign. I came from the back so that the knots will be in the front, tied the knot on each side and that's my hanger. I just trimmed the edges and I think it looks so cute. There is something so rustic about an old rugged cross and that's what I'm going to make. I had a bunch of sticks that my husband was kind enough to gather for me before the winter started and I've been saving them for you know whatever I might want to use them for. So I'm gathering the same size sticks for the long side of the cross and then I'm going to cut some to make the short side of the cross. And this is just so fun. I mean I'm just playing with sticks. They're free, they came from outside. So now I'm gonna use my uh, tin snips and just try to cut off any knobs that are, you know, distracting. Just, you know, trying to get the pieces to a similar size. I'm not going for like an exact, I don't mind if some of the pieces stick out a little bit because this is rustic and it's rugged. And I just love the whole concept of this. Now that I have my two little stacks of sticks, easy for me to say, <laughs> I'm going to use some jute twine and I'm going to tie just before the ends. So like, I don't know, an inch or so before each end. And I'm going to hot glue it down and I'm going to wrap it around so that it holds nice and sturdy. And then I'm going to add some additional hot glue here and there to make sure that it stays in place, like that the middle sticks don't slide out. I'm going to do this on each end of the two stacks. So that's four different spots that I'm going to do this. And it just adds to the farmhouse rustic look of it. And it's just, I love it, you guys. I really do. I mean, talk about a cost effective DIY, but it's beautiful. It's just so natural and beautiful. And I cannot wait for this to be up in my house. I'm super excited. And now I'm moving on to the short stack, which is the cross part of the cross, or should I say the horizontal part of the cross. I'm going to do the exact same thing to this one that I did to the other one. Now it's time to assemble my cross and the way I'm going to do that is using that same twine and I don't think I said it earlier but this twine is from Walmart. I'm going to pull it under and I'm going to tie a knot around diagonally and then I'm going to continue to wrap it around back and forth on each angle and then even around the two sides to get a really nice secure hold and I'm going to hot glue it down and just like I did with the other ones look for any loose spots and add a little dab of hot glue to hold it in place. I want it to be very secure. I don't want this to go anywhere and I am just loving this one you guys. It's so it just peaceful it's well it's the cross I mean what it represents and you know what Jesus did for us by being on that cross it was it was just very cool to make this I have this gorgeous burlap ribbon with lace over the middle from Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it from around the back of the tall side of the cross and then over the top of the horizontal pieces, kind of like a shroud. I mean, maybe you've seen people wrap things around a cross like this before, but I just thought it was just the perfect touch. It kept it farmhouse rustic and it just, oh, I don't know. You guys, I really love this one. I don't know what else to say. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm just so excited. I know my husband's going to want it. I just know I'm never going to see it again.
Well, I shouldn't say that. He'll put it in his office and that's where I'll see it again. <laughs> So cute. Now, I didn't want to do the gold star on top because I didn't want to do a Christmas tree, but I did everything else. But it's $72.99, and I knew I could make it for a couple of dollars. So I've got a picture frame from Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to be using some craft sticks and my white Arteza paint marker, along with three colors of paint. There's going to be steel from Waverly. I'm going to use the antique wax from Waverly and the white wax from Waverly. Now I'm going to make a much smaller version of this sign, but I'm still going to copy the basic sign itself. I'm going to be blending these colors until I think I achieve the color that theirs was. I didn't really have one paint that would fit that, so I did a bunch of layering so that I could come up with what I believe to be the right color. In order to create the same pattern that their little wood planks were, I cut a bunch of craft sticks to varying sizes and then kind of put them together like a puzzle. And once I had the right amount, I took them off of that piece of cardboard and I put some glue down and I added a couple rows at a time so that I could keep everything intact and just recreate as best as I could the look that they did. I use those same three colors to layer onto this wood base that I made and I'm going to achieve as close as I can to the color that they use since I don't actually know what it is. It's kind of a guessing game just by looking at it. You have to tell me if you think I achieved it. Using my white Arteza paint marker, I am going ahead and drawing the tree now. It's just a stick tree. It doesn't require any special artist skills. It's just, you know, steady hand and doing the best you can. It couldn't be simpler, to be honest with you. And I don't think if it was any more complicated, I could have done it. What do you think? Did I nail it or fail it? I am very happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys like it. Please let me know. My husband loved this one, so it was a win in our house. One funny thing is when I put it together, I realized I had drawn the tree on upside down, so I had to change the hanger around. <laughs> Easy fix. wire wreath at Target Dollar Spot and I don't want to use the flowers for this I just want to use the ring so I'm going to pry them off they had them wrapped in this heavy duty little metal thing it took some serious muscle but I did it <laughs> and now I can use this to create my next project I'm going to take some lavender picks now I'm going to paint this ring black with my ink Waverly chalk paint, both sides of course. And I just love the way that looks. I think that just really nice. I love the original color, but it just isn't going to go with what I'm trying to do today. 
I'm going to remove the tag and trim down my little lavender pick, which I did get at the Dollar Tree, by the way. They have some pretty good ones this year. Um, I also like the ones at Walmart too. Now I've got this really cute striped ribbon from burlapfabrics.com and I'm going to use this throughout this particular DIY. I absolutely love this ribbon and of course I will have a link down in the description box. And of course I'm using my tin snips to cut these which I love. They are so handy. I'm going to take a little piece of jute twine and just tie my pieces of lavender together. I want them to have the look like they're hanging, like when you hang dried flowers. So I'm just going to do that, wrap around the excess little bit of twine and hot glue it down. I'm going to fan out my pieces of lavender so that they kind of fill the entire ring. And then I'm going to take that adorable ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around the ring three different places. At the bottom, in the middle, and towards the top. And I think it just looks so cute. I, you know, sometimes you wrap around the whole ring, but I just wanted to add some accents because I want the lavender to be the focal point. And now I'm just trimming the excess that might show through. Now that I've got the ribbon wrapped around three times, I'm going to take some more of that same ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around the very bottom of my little bouquet of lavender. I just thought that would look really cute. And I'm going to hot glue it down. And then after that's done, I'm going to position it on the ring and then I can hang it like upside down and it looks so cute. It's very lightweight, so I can just use hot glue to attach it, and it's going to stay just fine. And because I love this ribbon so much, I'm going to cut a little piece that I can wrap around at the very top and then I will add a little bit of jute twine behind it and hide the hanger so it looks like the cute ribbon is the hanger, but really the jute twine behind it is. And I love doing that. It just makes it look so finished, but not secure to hang it by that really. So by putting the jute on there, it really does help make it secure. And to make the back look finished off, I'm going to cut another small piece of that ribbon and I'm going to cover the knot right over the back of the jute twine and then all you'll see is the little hanger. And that is just so perfect. It looks much more finished now. Now, honestly, anyone could stop right here. Well, except me, of course. <laughs> so I'm going to take some jute twine, wrap it around, and I'm going to make it just a little kind of a messy bow with it. I'm going to tie it around the middle, cut open the loops and trim it, and I'm just going to hot glue it right to the center of where the gathering is of the lavender. And then I will be done, <laughs> believe it or not. But I think this turned out so cute. I really love it.
I used this little garden edging from the Dollar Tree and then there's also uh, this gather sign I got at the Target Dollar Spot. That wreath that you saw is for a different DIY. I wasn't sure what I was going to do when I first started. I'm using my tin snips to take off all the edges and trim down this little garden edging and those tin snips are amazing. I will link that down in the description box. I love them. And I'm just going to, you know, shape it to the size that I want it to be. I don't know if you noticed, but I accidentally broke the piece on the top. So I'm going to hot glue it on both sides to get that thing to stay. And that does take care of it, by the way. So it worked out perfectly. I'm going to use my Kills White Primer to heavily dry brush. I wouldn't even say it's a dry brush. It's a pretty wet brush. The front and back of the little garden edging. I wanted it to have a different look than just the black. Now I will struggle with this later, you'll see, because of the gather sign and how it doesn't show up really well. But we'll take care of that as we go. In the meantime, I love the way this looks. It's so pretty. Now I'm going to take my gather sign and I want to make it look like galvanized metal instead of just super shiny. So I'm going to use a little makeup sponge. First thing I'm going to do is take the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, which is black. I'm going to dab it all over the sign until I have enough on there to make me feel like it looks good. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my plaster color chalk paint and I'm going to put that all over, do the exact same thing. Next, I'm going to take my elephant color chalk paint, which is like a gray, and I'm going to do the same thing with that one. And then after that's done, I'm going to take my metallic silver, and I'm going to do the same thing. And then I get the look that I'm hoping for, and it really does come out good. I learned this from a channel called Chalk It Up Fancy, and I will put their link in my description box as well. I'm going to use some Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel to create a bit of a rusted look. So I'm just going to put it around the edges of the letters and it really does give it that, you know, rust worn look. It's a very cool technique. Now for the fun part, figuring out how I want to assemble this. I have this really cool twine ribbon from burlapfabrics.com, which I will put all the information in my description box. And I've also got these little lavender picks. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of stretch out the lavender so they spread out a little bit, trim off anything I don't like on there. And then I'm going to wrap that little twine ribbon around the bottom. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love this ribbon. Thank you so much for sending this to me, Burlap fabric.com. I am loving it. It's so unusual and it's just the coolest. Now I'm going to hot glue my little bundle of lavender down to the bottom of the center of this little edging. And it looks so good, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm really excited about this one. And I'm going to attach my little gather metal sign to the center of the bottom of the bouquet where that really cool ribbon is. Now, this is where I started struggling because you can't hardly read the gather sign. And I just didn't think about that. I'm tacking down the little lavender plants so that they stay exactly where I want them to go. And I decided to add a little bit more lavender in the center because I felt like it was just missing something right there. I have this really cool wide ribbon that burlapfabric.com sent me and I'm going to put that in the back. I think that's going to look really good. My first attempt to make the gather sign stand out is to put a little bit of a lighter color over it. It doesn't really work. I'm going to go back over some of that edging with a little bit of my black paint. Next, I'm gonna hot glue that wide ribbon to the back and just make sure it's nice and secure. There's a little bit of excess hanging over on both sides, so I'm gonna trim that off. In case I decide to hang this, I'm just gonna add a little bit of jute twine around the back, make a knot, and glue it to that little piece in the back. And that's so simple, it'll just make it hang and you can't even see it.
Okay, so I'm still struggling with seeing this gather sign. So now I'm trying the black paint and I'm putting it all around the edges. That really does help actually. That is making it stand out a little better. But then I got a teeny bit heavy handed with it. So I have to go back in with the elephant and cover up where I got too many black blotches. When you see the final reveal on this one, you'll see that I added a little bit of the celery colored paint and that actually finally did the trick. you also save containers? <laughs> Let me know in the comments what kind of crazy things you save. So I have this creamer container. I've got a bunch of them that I keep saving. I thought I'll make something out of it. So I'm going to repurpose it. I'm going to remove the outer wrapping and I'm going to use a combination of the white rope from Dollar Tree, which I love and I finally found some. And then also some uh, regular natural looking um, nautical rope that I have also from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do a combination of those wrapping them around this bottle and and hot gluing it. Now the tricky part was getting the little like nozzle twist top part off. I, I should have just gotten out a saw, which I don't know why I didn't, but I used my hot glue gun and I poked holes all the way around and then took a scissors and cut it off. What a dumb idea. Okay, you guys don't do that. Just don't do that. Either leave the top on and cover it with the rope or get a saw or something. That was just not my brightest moment. <laughs> anyway, it's off. That's all that really matters. And now I'm gonna go hot glue all this rope on. With the white rope, it's a little like kind of frayed is that, is that a word? Fray at the end. So I used a little hot glue on the end first and kind of like pulled it together so it was more of like a, a nice tight end and then I attached it. And I do that also when I get to the end of the white rope before I start another one. Otherwise, it's just too wide. Does that make sense? Anyway, go ahead and watch. You'll just see me. I'm going to speed it up and you'll just see me wrapping the rope all the way around. I decided to alternate between the two different kind of ropes. I thought that made it look more interesting. And then when I get to the very top and I'm back to the natural looking rope, I, because it was such a jagged top edge because of the ridiculous way that I cut it off, I went ahead and I just kept wrapping over the top a little bit to cover all the plastic so there were no sharp ends or anything like that at all. Once I get to the top, I just tuck it under a little bit, hot glue it, and cut off the rope. And now I'm gonna grab some really pretty florals that I got at the Dollar Tree. I love these little pink and white flowers. You could put any flowers that suit your decor or the season so you can change them out very easily. And I'm just gonna start cutting them into pieces. I'm also gonna add another little pick that I found. They're kind of like these pink mini berry looking things. I don't really think they're berries, but I don't know how to describe them. But I like it because it's a different texture and they're tall and kind of windy. Thought that made it look very interesting. And you guys, literally that's it. This was a really easy DIY and I'm really happy with how it turned out. What do you think? Well, let me know down in the comments. Very 
plain wooden frame. You don't see me painting it, but I used my metallic rose gold paint by Folklore to paint the outside of the frame and then I covered it with a little bit of polyurethane that was a quick dry version. The next thing that I decided to do was dress it up a bit. I added some greenery and this greenery I believe I got at Dollar Tree. I did get some other greenery at Walmart but I'm pretty sure this one did come from the Dollar Tree. And then of course my jute. What I did here was I created two little pieces that I cut off the stems of the picks and I added them to the top left corner and the bottom right corner with my hot glue. And you can position these any way that you want. I just kind of wanted it to be a little accent on the opposite corners there. My mom doesn't have any plants in her house because she's afraid that she'll kill them. <laughs> so I figured this would add some greenery without having anything that she has to take care of or worry about killing or whatever. Then I took some of my jute and I wrapped it around three of my fingers about 20 times and then I cut each of the ends and then I tied a little bit of jute around the middle to make the flowers. They ended up being a couple inches long after I trimmed them. I put one in the middle of each of the greenery corners. I know there's so many ways to make these flowers. I really don't know all of them yet, but this one I just kind of came up with and I thought it would be really easy. So then I stretched the jute around to kind of make it more circular and I had trimmed them so they wouldn't overpower the frame. And then I thought I should put something in the middle of the flower, so I got two of my beads and I had ordered the beads off Amazon because you get a thousand for a really good price versus the little bag from the Dollar Tree. And those are colored so you have to paint them and these come just plain wood so you can make them anything you want. My mom uses teal in her house so I went ahead and I painted the centers of the flowers teal to kind of match her decor. And I'm just using the end of a little foam brush that was pretty worn out, but there was still a little portion of it that was usable. So rather than throw it away, I went ahead and I just tore it off and I used that to paint those little beads. And then I added that rose gold just to the very center and I used a little uh, bead of hot glue to make a little center and there it is. It came out really cute. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you think you could. I didn't remember to film the first part. I kind of got excited and creative and forgot to turn the camera on so I'll walk you through it. I used the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and also some of the large popsicle sticks to make this. I've been using the natural wood tumbling tower blocks for projects but leaving the painted ones so I thought maybe I'll use them in this project because I can paint over them. I used my hot glue to put nine of the tumbling tower blocks together in stacks of three. I repeated this to make all four sides and glued them all together. And then I created a square and you can see that two sides that are opposing each other fit inside of the other two in order to make the finished box. On what would be the top side, I took four of the large popsicle sticks and just framed around so that there would be nothing showing of the tumbling tower blocks. And of course, I cut off the rounded ends of the popsicle sticks for every single one that I did use. I used nine of the large popsicle sticks then and I attached them to the very top. As you can, this is from the underneath view, but I did that all the way across to create the front of my sign and I used my hot glue gun to do that. Once all of the popsicle sticks were attached and everything looked the way I wanted it, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I went ahead and stained the top and then rubbed off the excess with a paper towel. I then painted the tumbling tower blocks with the folk art chalk paint in the color Cascade and I just did the outside and the very bottom. I took some of my nautical rope and I just hot glued it around the very top outside edges just to give it a little extra trim. And here's another view so that you can see it from a different angle. And at this point we are caught up to where I did film what I was doing. 
I was looking for a cute little saying having to do with coffee that was pretty short. And I found all kinds of things and then all of a sudden I got this idea I could do something really different. And so I got my stencils out and my square ruler, which I now know what it's called. Thank you, Alan from Alan's Music Channel. And I am now trying to figure out a way to measure this to find out the center. I was watching a crafter's channel and I wish I could remember which one it was. I apologize that I don't. She shared this trick. If you're measuring something and it's not an even number, you can tilt your ruler until you get to an even number on the edge and then mark it right in the middle there and you will find your center. And it really worked. So there you go. I did spend some extra time trying to calculate where I actually wanted to put the letters once I had my center. And part of it was I needed to figure out the height of the letters and where everything would fall in the midst of it. And afterwards, it also occurred to me I could have probably done a diagonal measurement and gotten the center that way. But hey, there's more than one option. Once I found the exact spot where I wanted to put my letters, I taped a straight edge to it as a guide so that I would be able to line them up. And I got my stencil out and I used a little dabber and a very small amount of the white chalk paint by Folklore. And I went ahead and I started spelling the word coffee. Now I need to tell you guys, I am terrible at stenciling. I taped down the letters, I cut them out, and they still bled, which means I had to go in and do touch-ups, and maybe it's because they were small, but I just don't do well at stenciling. I'm going to have to look into some good stickers or vinyl, because this is just a pain. It took me forever to get them right. Once I did get the letters on, I took a little art brush and I connected any of the open spots on the letters because I didn't want them to look as much like stencils, so I filled those in. And when I did that, I overpainted, so then I had to go back with the Waverly Wax in Antique, and this went back and forth for I don't know how long, and I'm not going to show you all of it because it just took forever. I finally got to a place where I decided it was good enough. I mean, it is homemade, so it didn't have to be perfect, and I let it go. And this is the part that I made up, which was the hashtag coffee. Even though I'd looked for so many sayings, I had never seen this, and I thought, oh, how cute. In order to balance the words across the middle, I added a heart with my stencil at the other end, and that just really, for me, completed that part. I cut a few pieces off of that same greenery that I used for the picture frame project so that I could add a little more flair to this and it wouldn't be quite as plain. And I did similar kind of a design with the greenery in the corner, but then I didn't want to do flowers, so I just wrapped the two pieces in each corner together around where the stems met with my jute, and then I attached that with my hot glue gun right to the picture on the opposing corners. And I really thought it came out cute. I'd love to know what you think and how you would have done this if you would have done anything different or if you have any other ideas that would be fun so let me know in the comments. Now wouldn't you know that I completely forgot to put Mod Podge over the top to kind of seal the paint and I'd already put the greenery on so I got my Mod Podge out and a little foam brush and I just worked around everything and you know what it worked out but silly me I completely forgot to do that step so note to self for the next time get the Mod Podge on before you add anything extra to the top. It's always good to keep learning and keep an open mind because things happen and you just have to adjust. <laughs> and here is the finished sign. I am so happy with how it came out. 
No, it's not perfect, but it's so cute. And it looks so good by our coffee bar. And here's just another view so you can kind of see the outside where I painted it. And those are the dog treats sitting there on the counter with it. But anyway, I just really love how it turned out. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. You are truly a blessing to me. Let me know which one was your favorite. And if you want to hang out with me some more, I've got another video on the screen. And if you click on that, I will see you there. Bye. I've been out on the streets where the lights are red. I've been hiding the world safely in my head.